Hello, everybody. Hey, it's another Incarnate live stream. You know what we're doing today? We're making the throne room. Yeah, with the fantasy battle map style. Yes, we're making seats for royal runts. Okay, that's the plan. Hello, King Clown. Welcome, everybody. That's right. Even royals need a place for their butts, and that's what we're doing today. Okay? Awesome. All right. I'm going to let some people just file in here. I think we just finished the do a quick announcement announcing the winner for the Babylonian contest is Dodo. Great work. Shout out to him. Good work on that map. Looks great. All the submissions were really incredible, but there can only be one winner, at least for first. And the other two submissions were also fantastic. So great work to everybody on your submissions and best of luck in the next one to come. So awesome on that. All right. All right. Who wants to get started with throne rooms? Let's do this. So we're going to go ahead and create a new map. And I'm going to use a specific aspect ratio. First, I'm going to pick my style. It's going to be fantasy battle maps. Choose my style. I'm going to go with some high editing resolution, Ultra 4K. I'm going to go with portrait. And for those of you who don't know, portrait is also the aspect ratio that you want to use for printing. Okay. Uh, you can also use landscape that's just rotated so you can change that in your printer settings just to let you know but the reason why i'm going with a portrait for a throne room is i kind of feel like the players like if you're playing in a vtt or whatever it is you're playing you kind of go up the screen as you're going vertically up and then you meet the throne room so a little bit of space between you and the throne room and i feel like that's the kind of right aspect ratio that we want to use you could go with landscape but for me portrait always looks good for throne rooms I'm going to go ahead and let that load. Awesome. Glad there are people here. Only four viewers right now. That's okay. It will pick up steam. I'm glad that everyone is here. All right. So now that we have that, my first step is to always designate uh, which what I'm using for a background, what's going to be the FG and the BG. For me, I think I'm just going to go ahead and just fill it up. So the quick fill trick is just use the mask tool, the rectangle shape right here, and just to... Hold, click, drag across the screen, and if you just press enter, or right here are the options, there's going to be an add and subtract, just press add. And it's going to go ahead and make this all on the FG layer. So that looks nice. And then we want to think about the overall layout. I'm going to remove this green. I'm going to first just put a texture on top of that. Just for now, we'll obviously change that, but I just but I don't think of green when I think of a throne room unless it's maybe... A dilapidated one in the in the in the forest with moss growing everywhere that's cool i like that but i'm going to go with a more standard throne room that's more easier for people to uh kind of replicate don't want to go anything super fancy so this is just the background texture that i want to use this is what we're going to get started with and then from there i'll go ahead and figure out my layout like what is it that i want to create so i like to use the path tool quite often i use the path tool for doing like a sketch it's really helpful to kind of have a general idea in your head before you proceed. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can just, you know, just start with no idea in your head. You can totally do that, but it's easier for you if you come up with an idea in your head beforehand or some kind of sketch or reference image that makes it so much easier for you, right? Why not just rely on uh, like the collective kind of artistic talent of everybody and look for references and then obviously don't copy it, right? You're just, but you're going to use it as a reference to give you an idea of what the throne room or whatever it is you're making looks like. So I'm going to start with a, squet, a sketch, a squetch. Anybody like me to start with a squetch? I don't know what that is. It sounds inappropriate though. I'll make sure to use that phrase multiple times throughout the video then. So first I'm going to create a what I want is like a dais. If you don't know what a dais is, a dais is like a circular platform in which um, it's like a step up. It's like a circular thing. It's called a dais. D A I S, I believe is the proper term. And a dais is something that like you would have like a throne on top of, or a statue, or something like that. And so this dais is going to be circular. I'm going to probably create two of them. So I want like a two step, and then I'm going to have the throne at the top and there could be two thrones you know when it comes to a throne you know in the movies or whatever trope or images that you see fantasy or otherwise you know you could have just the king alone as an autocratic de you know ruler you could have uh maybe the king and queen so you'd have like two thrones 
like this. So one being the king and the other one being the queen. You could do that. You could have maybe advisors sitting down at the bottom at the dais. Um, so you have some, maybe some advisors here and even some family members, blood relatives that would be close to the king or at least have the king or queen's ear. So those are kind of things that you can add in a throne room. I would also think that a throne room is something that would be imposing. Like when you want your subjects or even like an enemy or a rival to like show up at your throne to discuss either diplomacy or war or demands or talking with other people, you want to create a throne room that's kind of imposing, right? It leaves an impression so that that way either your subjects or contenders or whatever are going to feel kind of like, ah, wow. This guy or girl, wherever your ruler might be, is, whoa, they mean business. Like, whoa, that's that's pretty awesome, right? So make sure that you add some kind of element, at least I like to, that's imposing and kind of makes the people who enter this place like, whoa. All right, thank you, by the way, Cheryl, for adding in the, uh, the definition of a dais. I love that. Okay. So we have this now, so there's a dais, and we'll, this is just a sketch. We might go outside of this. And then also I had mentioned that I kind of want it to uh, have that vertical feel to it. So let's say I want to use this new uh, feature that we added with the path tool, which is segments. And what I'm doing is maybe, whoa, that seems like a bug right there. I don't think you're supposed to see that. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, in the segment so this is like a rug that's what that's going to be and i don't know what this is about one second maybe i can what is going on here that's super weird i'm just going to save this real quick i'm going to call it throne room it sounds like some kind of thing i love when i advertise bugs on the stream I just, hey everybody do you like that <laughs> hey anybody into uh you know what was that etch-a-sketch thing you ever anyone done etch-a-sketch you know when you would ooh, Turn the little knobs. That's what's going on right here. This is etch a sketch nonsense. What is this etch a sketch nonsense? I'm frustrated with this. All right, so we're going to save, refresh the page. Hopefully, that will make it not so wonky. All right, so I'm just going to refresh the page. And if you ever see something like that, just refresh the page. It's usually just old data or whatever. So just refresh the page. And if it, you see it consistently happening and won't stop, you know, just click that little button at the bottom right here, bottom right, and it's gonna be like a little speech bubble. If you click that, then you'll be able to reach customer support, which I'm a part of. Now in the map editor, you're gonna find the customer support up here in the hamburger menu. So you'll just go right down to help, chat with support, just click that button, and then we'll go right over to one of us and we will help you, okay? So you'll see that the Etch-a-Sketch is, is gone, thank goodness. You will rue the day you crossed us, Etch-a-Sketch. Hello, fellow humans. The dodo has arrived. All right, let's keep going. So this is the general idea. And I also want to consider like what else I might want. So I had mentioned imposing. So we could put statues um, up in this section right here. You could add some pillars along the side right here. Maybe even uh, put some windows with some lights, light rays going out like this to kind of illuminate that. You could add in some pillars like this. I mean, there's all kinds of options, pillars right here, just like in the thumbnail image. And then you can also think in about uh, defenses. Like if you go into a throne room, you want to make sure that your ruler is protected. So people can't just waltz right in and just go whoop, off with his head. You don't want to do that. You want to keep, make sure that your king is safe. So there's a series of like defenses that you can include, like maybe a place where you have a couple soldiers sitting as gu or guards. Maybe there's a, a sense of railing or something like that. Like maybe there's a railing right here that goes all the way across the room. And maybe there's a little door right here somewhere and only someone with a key. And maybe the railing is like mm, maybe two and a half, three feet tall. So if they want to get across, they'd have to jump over, giving a lot, allowing, allowing for more reaction time for guards. So you can add in that element. You can add in some fantasy elements. Maybe there's a candle sitting right next to the king's throne. And whenever somebody lies in the presence of the king, that candle will flicker violently. 
So there's all these kind of interesting elements you can add. Maybe you have a seat for a jester. Maybe you have some seats for people to be entertained right over here. There's a lot of different options. Think about the story, what's going to be happening on this map, uh, who are you going to be encountering, and things like that. So I think that the flickering candle idea is kind of cool. If you're wondering where I got that idea from, it's from the movie Hero. Just, you know, I didn't come up with that idea in my head, but a truth-telling candle would be nice. Uh, maybe adding in some railing, some kind of protection would be cool. So we'll probably incorporate all of this fun stuff into that, okay? Unless you guys have your other ideas, but I think that's a kind of a cool idea. Welcome, RZ Corvidi. Welcome. Oh, gosh, nice to have so many nice people here. So here's the general layout that we're going with. I'm just going to select all this stuff. I'm just going to group it. You can just press the G key too. Boom. It's all grouped. I'm going to send it to layer all the way down to negative five. And I'm probably just going to change the opacity just a bit because that'd be kind of kind of distracting. But this just gives me a general outline that I could work with. And I'm also going to lock it like that so it's nice and locked. Or I think there's also other uh, options that you can do. You can also lock here. You can unlock, lock, and there's also the shortcut keys here. So just look at this uh, hamburger menu and you'll see the shortcut keys for this or just press K. There's shortcut keys right here. Make sure that you go and look over these shortcut keys because you really want to speed up your process. So go, don't forget, press that K key to check that out. All right, so now we have the general layout set up. Oh, hey, a secret escape behind the throne itself. Oh, I love that idea. That's that's awesome. That That is genius. I love that idea. We will make sure to incorporate that. Love it. Okay, first, let's go ahead and make the walls first, as you would expect. And there's multiple ways to go about that. You can make walls by just piecing together stamps, which is pretty standard. Uh, don't worry, we're, gonna, we're thinking about uh, making something a little bit easier for your lives with that. Or you can just use the mask tool. And it's really up to you which way that you want. If you want your walls to have a little bit more detail, then go with stamps. Because obviously stamps are going to have a lot more detail and line work. Now if you just want simple walls that are not complex, maybe you just want them to be black because you don't want to focus on the intricacies of your walls. And you instead just want to focus on what's going on in the interior. Right, so there's two ways to go about it. Maybe we can let you decide, should we piece together some walls and do that, or should we use the mask tool? Let me know what you think. Are you using your mouse to draw, or do you have a tablet hooked up? Okay, so it depends what I'm doing. That's a great question, by the way. Brass Lock asks, am I using a tablet or a mouse? I love this question. So I use a mouse for most actions, but if I'm drawing something, like I'm drawing these lines with the with the, um, the path one, I'm absolutely using a tablet. I actually have a pen, and I and if you have the funds, I totally recommend getting a pen because a pen is extremely helpful for blending your textures, um, for uh, making uh, lines with your path tool, stuff like that. But I don't use my pen for everything because using using the uh, Using the mouse is actually easier for most actions, placing some stamps, uh, text, all that stuff. The pen is actually a little bit more difficult to, to work with if you're using it for everything. So it's a cross between pen and mouse. Okay. All right. And so for that, we've got one person recommending using the mask tool, but I'm not going to do any crazy drawing or anything. Hey, good day to you. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so we're, I'm just going to go with the mask tool because the mask tool is a bit, a bit quicker. And I'll show you guys a couple ways to do walls with, with the mask tool. There's one, the grid tool. The grid tool is one way that you can make walls. And the reason why the grid tool is good is because the grid tool uh, allows you to make very straight and crisp walls. So it's easy to make. But it is time consuming in a sense that you're going to have to go in and just... Uh, do each single one. So I'll give you what I mean by that. Make sure it's set to one and make sure it's not set to add because the whole thing's on the add mode. So the opposite would be the subtract mode. Okay, so you go like this. Oopsie. I, for some reason, it's set to 30. I made a big boo-boo there. So we'll just press undo and just fix that. Okay, so subtract one and you're gonna go obviously like this down across. 
So there's this method. Now, what's really nice about using the mask tool is that you can actually set the parameters of the mask tool effects. And that's really nice. So you might want to, so that way you can kind of make a shadow that goes all the way around the walls. Let's call that ambient inclusion. And that's really, really helpful. At least I think I really, really like that you can use these shadows. So let's go ahead and do that. We can even put maybe a wall that goes all the way across like this. And then we'll go back to the add mode real quick. And we'll just say that maybe this part is just the part that opens up. Like that. Oopsie, I think I missed one. Let's go one more like this. I'm not sure how many it is across each one. You have to do some counting. I think that's about right. Okay, so the other method that you can do to do this, if you don't want to go all the way around like that, is to just use this uh, this tool right here. And you go right, this is the mask tool. You go right over here, you click fills outlines of the shape. So I click this button right here. And you'll notice that there's a border. This thing is really helpful if you just want to make a bunch of rooms. You just have to edit the size. That means the overall width of this. And you can take a whole bunch of these and just make a bunch of rooms with it. Just make sure that you use the subtract tool. So you press subtract. You can go ahead and change it up, make another room and just press subtract and then change it up and then make a, another room. So you can make a whole bunch of rooms using this feature. Okay. So it's really helpful. I recommend using it. Let's go ahead and switch back and we're going to make this all back into the add mode again. So I'll go all the way across, make sure to turn off this so it's fill and just go with add and I'll go ahead and remove that all. So that is the methods in which you can kind of make walls with the mask tool, either with that frame option, that rectangular frame option, or you can go with the grid. Both ways work. Okay. Now, if you're... So now once you've done that, now you're obviously going to have to paint this. This is the BG layer. You're going to have to paint this a different color. Let's just go ahead in and remember there's a quick fill option. So we'll go right into textures and we textures are the best choices for making walls. So we'll figure out which ones are here. Uh, I kind of like this one right here. This stone wall works just fine. You can use this darker, dark gray ground. Um, let's first instead to decide what we want to be the wall, we should decide the ground. And the reason why I say that is because your wall and your ground should contrast. That means either have your wall be dark and your ground be lighter, or have your line be your ground be darker and your walls be lighter. And the reason why that is is because you want your walls to pop out from your ground so they look separate from each other. So always remember contrast when thinking ground texture and wall texture when you're using the mask tool, okay? Also, you want to factor that even when using stamps, okay? You want walls to pop out, and then you want your ground to not pop out. You want it to seem somewhat flat, right? Unless it's not a room, like it's uh, out outside, it's terrain, okay? So let's do first uh, the ground texture that we want, and we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna pick whichever one we want. Tiles work just fine. Me, personally, the idea that I had in my mind was to have the reflection of chandeliers uh, on the ground. So we want to maybe create a ground texture that looks somewhat reflective because I've noticed that it's actually hard to incorporate um, chandeliers in a room because the chandelier would get in the way of movement, really. It would look weird if a person is just walking over a chandelier in a VTT or even if you're just doing it on a print, right? But if if it's a reflection on the ground, it totally makes sense that your players are going to be walking over it, right? So, like I said, I really want to put in a chandelier reflecting on the ground. I think that would be really interesting, and people might like that. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's pick a ground first that might be nice. I'm not going to choose a tile ground. I'm actually going to choose a, a texture that has less uh, line work like this, so that way it doesn't obscure too much of the chandelier. So maybe one of these might work, like this this texture right here, or a flat, flatter texture that doesn't have too much artifacts, like even this sand one right here, we could just completely desaturate it, make it gray. Uh, I, again, I don't wanna use these tile ones because I don't want it to obfuscate. I really don't want it to obfuscate. 
So let me go down and see if I can find some ones. There's this one right here. This white tile is bright enough that it actually might work. Let's test that out. Let's go ahead and put down this. You can quick fill, make sure it's set to FG. I'm gonna press enter and just see how it looks first. And I'm gonna turn off the grid as well because it's distracting. Okay, and I wanna see how it lines up with the walls, right? And I kind of feel like these tiles are small and let's just assume that these tiles are five by five feet. This room would be utterly massive. So instead, what I wanna do is go right back to that texture. I'm gonna go into the advanced settings and I'm gonna resize it, okay? I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. We're gonna factor in what five by five feet might be. All right, I'm gonna go up about here. It should be okay and we might have to do some adjustments because I kind of want them to line up properly with the room so let's just apply it first just see how it looks okay I'm looking at it let's see here I might want to even resize it let's go with exact measurements let's go with 50 instead and just see what that looks like oh I'm sorry it has to be bigger 200 my mistake Go with 200 let's go with 250 we'll just see which ones look best Let's go ahead and apply that. Oopsie, it didn't show. Let me do it again real quick. Sorry. Press enter. I think I think that's okay. I might want to change the offset just a little bit so it's a little more even on both sides. I think that's just fine. Let's do that. Hello, welcome. Okay, yeah, that looks fine to me. I'm gonna go ahead and delete my delete that. Oopsie, come on. Uh, oopsie, I'm not sure what's going on here. How do I delete this? Come on, you can do it. Oh, there we go, my mistake. I don't have selection tool. <laughs> so now that I've made my ground a little bit lighter, I should probably make my wall a bit darker, right? So I'll factor in that, that the wall should be somewhat the same material. So a lot, it's okay to have it somewhat light, but not too light. You want it to contrast. So maybe this one right here might work as a wall. I do like this dungeon, um, from this dungeon textures, this stone wall right here, which is kind of nice. It's a throne room. You'd think of it as being uh, well protected. You want the walls to be thick. It's gonna either withstand cannon fire or magic, arrows, all that kind of stuff. So let's make the throne room walls sturdy, durable, and, and uh, are gonna kind of keep our royal rumps protected, okay? I'm gonna go over, make sure it's set to BG because that's what the wall is. I'm gonna go across and just see how it looks at first. We might have to resize it. So far that looks okay to me. I would actually make it just a bit darker. Like this, it's a wall. Let's go with a little bit darker, press enter, see how it looks. Let's go back. Yeah, that's a nice dark wall. Now let's go ahead and play with uh, the mask settings. Let's go zoom in and actually take a look first how it works. These are brown. I kind of feel like the stroke should be black instead. That might work better instead of that brown. Uh, we might want to consider turning off a lot of the shadows first, inner shadow, outer shadow, and the ripples effect. We want to keep the outer shadow might work good. I don't know why, why those came back. That's weird. Maybe inner shadows might be okay because this is the outside of the wall. So let's go into the inner shadow options. Let's make the blur really big. So this part right here, it's gonna stick out quite a bit. Let's go about even farther, quite a bit. I think that looks good. Let's increase the opacity. And what we're basically creating right here is the ambient occlusion. If you don't know what ambient occlusion is, I've mentioned it in almost every stream. An ambient occlusion is just that very dark, the darkest shadow at the corner where the wall meets the ground, okay? And that nice dark shadow there. And what that does is again, creates contrast and depth, making it look like there's some depth here to the wall. Let me turn that off. And that way you can look at it again and see what it looks like without it. So if I turn off that inner shadow, you're gonna see the huge difference that it has, okay? And we might, we might change the inner shadow, inner shadow settings as we go because I also like to paint in additional shadows. That's just me, I like to do that because you'll notice up here that there's a little bit of light right here and so it doesn't look complete. So we'll go in and paint in a little bit more. 
Yes, absolutely, Savitz. Always be sure contrasting wall floor. So either have the wall darker or the floor darker and then the reverse with the walls, whatever. So just make sure that you always remember that. So that part is, is done for now. I'm gonna go ahead and save. It's only 43 changes, but it's always good to save. So we'll do that and we'll go over what we're gonna work on next. And I kind of feel like we should adorn the walls, right? Don't stop there with your walls. Let's add more things. And what does that entail? Me personally, I would feel that behind the dais and the statue, there would be kind of an, uh, either a an elaborate fresco a tapestry or maybe some statues that kind of hover over the king's uh dais the king and queen's dais and so it kind of leaves a sense of in, in, of an imposing backdrop to the throne now obviously creating a tapestry would be extremely difficult and top down but we do have some wall statues that would work just fine for this scenario so we'll go ahead and just type in statue just type that right in and you'll see that there's some marble wall statues and there's some good options we can go with a color scheme so there can be either this silver color or we can go with this gold color or brass really is what it's labeled there it looks goldish to me but brass works just fine so what do you guys think? Should we go with a brass or should we go with marble? We could put one down each and see how it looks because we're going to think about color scheme and how it goes with the wall. So let's just say that I put maybe one right here like this and I flip and rotate it and put that same one right here. So maybe we're going for a sense of like symmetry. So you have that one and maybe we want to put like a giant one like in the background right here with a book. You can put that as leaning up against the wall like this. So you have some kind of imposing backdrop. Oh, you go with the go with the brass? Absolutely, let's do it. I, I'm not against that, I like it. Let's do it. Let's go back in and check out the brass. Good suggestion, thank you. Hey everybody, good one, hey. That was on the same page, me like, me like. Okay, let's go back in here and we'll put that first one right here. And we're just gonna flip it. Turn off that random stamp. That's just annoying. Please go away. And we'll go ahead and add it in here. Like this. And then we'll add the larger one. Like this. Kind of a bigger one. And we'll kind of space it out. Now this line is not exactly center. So we might have to repaint that. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll look, re, re, reanalyze that in a bit. For now, let's just get the walls finished. And we can reconsider some of that texture. Yeah, great call on the brass, everybody. You guys are bad brass. What can I say? Bad brass. Okay, so now we have this nice backdrop, and now we want to consider adding in maybe some other things on the other side. Like, do we want to put in some, maybe some windows right here, maybe some pillars, some statues? Like, is, does it just stop there? Do we want to add in some light sources so that people can see what the heck they're looking at you know is the king so freaking hideous that there's no lights allowed in the room don't gaze upon my hideous face my quasimodo face i mean what is it you know think about this kind of stuff always think about adding in these things to give it story right and that's what makes it fun the more details you have in kind of the backstory about the throne room the more things you'll know what to include in the map right so it's really just as simple as that. So let's go ahead now and maybe we'll go back to walls in a little bit. Let's maybe jump in and just start with the dais. And we're going to want to pick some walls maybe to work as the dais. So if I take type in wall here and maybe concrete would work just fine. And the way that I'm going to make my dais is just by piecing together some walls. So I'm going to take one right here and put another one right on top and create a circle formation just like this. And I also want to kind of hide those seams right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this stamp and put it right on top of it. So that way I kind of have like a full connected circle. This one can be kind of tough. So if it's feel like it's too long and there's like a straightness to it, go to advanced settings, transform, and you can kind of change the height of it so that way it doesn't look too weird. 
put that right on top like this. So this is that first step of the dais. And I'm also going to turn off shadows or I could uh, change shadows. I'm actually thinking of just painting my shadows in. So I'll select all of it, turn off it, turn it off, <laughs> and then group. Okay, so this is that start of the dais right here like this. I'm going to copy and paste it and just put another one on top like this and just say this is a second set of stairs. So you're going up two steps technically to go up to the dais, okay? And we're going to think about where we want to place that. Also, someone had mentioned a secret door, and I think just for fun, we could make this statue the secret door. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that is also create a mechanism in which the door swings. So we'll go ahead and use that same concrete like this and take this random shape right here like this and put it against here like this. And this is kind of the, the part that swivels to kind of makes it swivel open and closed. Like you would think of like a car door. When you open a car door, you look down and you'll see that there's kind of this uh, piece. I don't even know what it's called. Any mechanics in the room? Shout out, any mechanics here? But that's that piece in which the door kind of rotates. I guess a, a hinge, if you want to call it. I don't know what it's called, so don't get unhinged on me, okay? I don't know. Now, if you do that, of course, if there's going to be an opening, we should probably go ahead and remove some of the wall there. Otherwise, what's the door to? Just wham! We open the door and the, the, we open the door and then bam! We just hit the wall. Well, what's the point of that, right? So let's not do that. Let's go back up and we're going to go ahead and just look at the length of the wall and then we're going to close it up. So I'm going to take this, put it back like this so that I kind of know where it's going to be right here. And then we're going to go ahead and put the door, let's say right here should be a good one, just right about there. And then just go ahead and press add and it will remove that section. There we go. And I might even want to turn off. Let's put that back and then put the door open just a little bit. The door is open just a peep like this. There we go. Just a bit. And then we'll put this on here like this. So we have a little escape room. Ha ha! The king can escape or queen, family, whatever. And I'm going to drop the brightness down a little bit as well because this, this section is probably going to be in shadow. There's not going to be a lot of light behind here, so we'll deal with that. So you have a nice door for them to escape. There we go. Oh, yeah. Escape. All right. Great suggestion, by the way, on that. Absolutely love that. That was fantastic. Uh, so let's do a couple more things. I want to do just a couple more fun things uh, to uh, the walls because I kind of want the walls to look cool. And so I'm going to put a nodule at the end of each part of the wall so it's not just flat like this. So it kind of represents like a door frame. So I'll put one here, one here. So there's those kind of door frames and another one here and right here. And we can change. We might want to consider rotating some of them and maybe even changing how bright they are because they kind of pop out a little too much. So maybe we can just make them a teeny bit darker. There we go. I think that works just fine. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Oop, did this one not get uh, dropped? I don't think so. My mistake. There we go. So these kind of represent the uh, the frames of the doors. And that's kind of nice. There we go. I think we're looking good so far. The dais is there. And we're going to want to factor in the size of people. So putting in the throne is really going to be the, is going to be what I would call the, this tool or the reference we're going to use for scale. Okay. These statues can be large. This room can be large. It's going in the back. That's fine. So let's pick a throne. Now the easiest way is to put it down a throne is just to look up throne right there in the search field and you'll see that there's varying thrones, okay? Now we need to factor in right now whether we want uh, our this to be a just for a single ruler, like maybe an emperor or just a king without a queen, or is it just a queen or an empress or whatever, or do we want it to be a couple? Do we want it to be a king and a queen or an emperor and his concubine or whatever the heck it is? Okay, whatever it is you want to use. Let's figure out how we want to do that. If it's going to be uh, for two people, then I would recommend making the dais a bit bigger. If you're going to do two people, and the way that I would go about that is just to open it up and to separate 
these things and to kind of take a straighter piece like this and just kind of piece them together. And we're going to make an oval shape. And that way you can fit both on top. So we'll go ahead and piece this and then I'll go ahead and take maybe uh, this piece right here and just put it on like this. I'll make sure to turn all those shadows off, of course, and then piece these together. We're going to make that nice oval shape. And so it'll be an oval shape dais instead of a circular one. Let's turn off all this layer work. We don't need that, none. Okay, make sure these are kind of connected to each other. And you're gonna to have to double time with these because now you have four sections to kind of hide. So we'll go ahead and delete this. I'm just gonna copy and paste each one of these on top so that these get hidden. I'm add another one right here and there's that. Make sure I delete this one, don't need it anymore. Okay, and so that we have kind of a dais for two people. And we're gonna increase the size just a bit and then I'll copy paste, add another one. We're still gonna stick with that two steps to get onto the dais, okay? Let's just go ahead and increase the size just a bit more so that way it does fit in fairly well. There we go, I think that looks okay. And we're gonna put this up here and how, oh, so we gotta think about the swing of this door as well. So I'm gonna think about maybe rotating it a little bit more. Maybe the full swing is about right here. That's full swing for the door. And then there has to be room for the door to open and for people to run around and get through there. Okay, so we gotta make sure there's room. I think that looks good. Yeah, I think that's all right. I think maybe this larger, this second one could go up a little bit more because I'm thinking about making sure this it's equidistant from each other. I think that looks okay. All right, now we don't want that center part to be tile floor. It's a dais, so it's kind of a separate architectural element in it. So instead, what we want is to fill in this, the inside of the dais with a different texture. And there's multiple ways you can go about that. Let's say that there's a rug on top of it. And if there's a rug, then we can just kind of pick uh, maybe a color we wanna go with. I'm gonna go with red but I want it to be not so dull. And maybe I want to like saturate it, make it a bit brighter, rotate, maybe rotate it a little bit because I don't want the artifacts to be repetitive. And this is one way that you can go about this. And when you're filling it in, I like to use my circle brush, remove that softness. And then when you apply it, make sure it's set to FG, that's one key, and then just apply it. And so you have this kind of rug and gold and red kind of go well together. So since you chose brass, let's just go with red as a complementary color. Now you can do it that way like this by painting it in, or if you want, you can actually just take an actual rug and put it underneath. So there are two ways to go about that. So I'll go ahead and open up a rug. Because let's, let's say that you want the rug to have a design on it or something, right? Let's say that you want a design on the rug like this one right here, or this one right here. You have this design, right? And you want that to be in there. Okay, well that's understandable. So first we'll have to do some transforming. First, let's go with height, like this, and we're gonna go over it real quick, and then I'll put it down below. So it's below just like that, and it's not, the color isn't like what we're aiming for, so there are a couple options. We can completely saturate it, and play with the hues, that's option one, or you could just change the blend mode to fit the color that's underneath it. So if I go luminosity, it already kind of goes there already. And you can do different things. You can change the blend modes to varying as well. So we can go through, like maybe you want a little bit darker red, like there's an evil eye at the base, whatever it is you want, go through those blend modes, kind of pick the one you want. I actually kind of like this hard light. It does show the overall design and it looks kind of nice, right? So I think that will that will do just fine. And then we also want to put the throne down. So we'll do two thrones instead of one because we just made room for two. And I'm not going to make them uh, super decorative. I'll just say that one, there's two of them. They're about the same size and everything. And this is that part where we're going to decide the actual size. So this is five by five feet. I think that this is a pretty decent. This would be about, let me just scale it down a little bit more. I think this is about right. Let me put it up against this corner right here. 
Mm, yeah, this looks about right. You could go a little bit bigger if you want, but this is about right. And I'm going to put two of them down. So there's one right here, copy, paste, and put the second one right there. Now, if you want some way to like distinguish one that one's the king and one's the queen, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You can just do separate thrones. That's up to you. It doesn't, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. It just depends on which way you're going with it. You can also include like maybe a set of stairs or something that leads up to uh, the king's throne. So it looks like uh, his is maybe a little bit taller if that's what you want to go for. It's up to you really. You can make that decision. Like you can put a little staircase, just goes right here like this. Just make sure it's below a layer. Oopsie, let's make sure that this one, oopsie, I think that this rug has to be a layer. Negative five, my bad. And this shouldn't have that. I'm gonna put it down right here. So you, if you want, you can put a little staircase that maybe goes up to the king's throne if you want to make sure that there's a distinguishing difference between the two you don't have to that's totally up to you uh i personally am not going to add it in there probably just remove it unless you protest and i should keep it okay so it's all right i also am thinking of maybe uh, no i think it's okay that should be fine all right we're having it open i'm only going to open it just a hair though just like that. There we go. Okay. Is there any questions so far? Any suggestions? Please let me know and we'll go on to it. Let's see. 105 changes. Let's save. Yeah, I listen. So if you have suggestions, let me know. We're just working on the dais and the central part of the throne room, which is obviously the thrones, the king, right? So this throne room is pretty big. So we have a lot to work with. Look at the size of those tiny butts that are going to be sitting there. So it's going to be a pretty big room. <laughs> All right, we're gonna save, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that we can add in. Maybe we want to create a end table on the side of the king with a scroll on it, or maybe we want to put where that candle is so that we can determine whether someone's telling the truth or not. So we're gonna add in all those elements, and maybe in some seating on the side for advisors or family members like we had discussed earlier, right? So first, let's add an end table in. And I'm gonna put that on the king's side, and I think I just put table right here. And there should be a series of tables that pop up. Personally, I like these end tables. These are nice. There should be one here without green on it. And we can just put an end table right here. And maybe this is the kind of the table where you put important things. Yes, I think the queen's throne should look different. All right, then the queen's throne. This is the queen's throne. You know what? I like that idea. I think that's a better idea. I dig that. Okay. So now we have this kind of end table right here. We'll put this on here so that that way, and I'm not going to line it up perfectly. Maybe I'll just rotate a little bit. So that way it's not too symmetrical. Too much symmetry can be beep, 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 beep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Adding an arch is a great idea. Hey, great call. I love it. Yeah, let's add an arch. Good thinking. I love me some good old arches. You know, let's add in that gold brass because it's already there. So what you can do is just kind of size them down and you can place them just right on top like this. If you want to make like a distinguishing difference between each other, you can put another one here or use a different one if you want. Maybe you want to use this one instead. But yes, absolutely. These are great to use. If you want a little bit more arch in yours too, you can always use that adjustment tool, by the way. So if you just go to transform and just go height like this you'll be able to give it a little bit more boom a little bit more curve to it okay so that's that is how it works so yeah i honestly i think we're going to delete that and just say that this is kind of the uh this is the queen's throne right here that's right the queen has spoken the empress of the known universe i love it Okay, we're adding that in there. So now we got the queen's throne has been all set up. This is her seat. Watch out. All right. So now we've got that. And we also want to consider adding in that candle or that candelabra. So you could add in candle like this. And there should be some options here. Let's expand all and see what we got. 
could make it interesting and say that there's like maybe a skull candle on a table that kind of is right here at all times and maybe the skull is got eyes looking at the person who's speaking to you so maybe we want to add a table right there so we'll go back to table and we'll look at our table options again and maybe we can put uh, maybe this one right here it's kind of it's going to be kind of large so it might be too big, but you can always mess with things. So if I go like this, like that, and I wanna make it a little bit smaller, and then I just wanna go right into that adjustment and just change that width. And then you have kind of a smaller table. I'm gonna take that down a layer like that, and I'm gonna maybe put it, I think this is fine. And then we'll put that, this right here, just like this. And I might even just rotate it just a hair, just to kind of, um, where'd that, where, whoa, where, what, did the skull disappear? Did I just, whoa, what happened? There you are. Whoa, go up. There we go. All right. Let's take it down a little bit. So this skull right here has a flame and it's sitting on this table and it's just waiting, waiting for people to talk and test and see if whatever the person who's addressing them is, uh, is, uh, telling the truth. So this is kind of like a truth telling kind of candle all right so you got that it's right there in the center and that way the queen can tell when someone is lying to her and let me tell you it's it's uh lying is really hard it's really difficult because it's it's so obvious when you do it so don't do it okay so just don't lie you make yourself look like an idiot so don't do it all right it's just not good not just for the ethics of it but don't make yourself look stupid okay <laughs> it's all right it's a magical magical trickster skull used to belong to the jester <laughs> that made the wrong chest. I love it. Yeah, add in some fun lore. I'm digging. <laughs> all right, let's go into these shadows. I'm just going to put them at zero and bring it all the way up. And we can figure out light source later. For now, we'll just go with shadows being kind of centered. I'll fix these two later. We haven't fixed a light source. So we've got the dais. We've got uh, the truth-telling skull. And then we might want to consider adding in some other things like maybe a giant rug that's kind of leading up to the throne room. Again, you can go with a texture if you want. We went with this texture right here and we can just go like this and just press enter like that. And you've got a kind of a nice rug kind of leading right up to that. And if you want some decorations in the rug, it's that same thing that we did before. If I just go into here and type in rug, you can play with blend modes and allow uh, some interesting in interesting um, kind of design. So like there's these rugs right here and you can just kind of zoom them up a little bit and put a couple of them together. So let's say that you want one right here and another one right here like this so you can do that and then you can change those blend modes again i think we went with soft light i think is what we went with there's also that hard light i think soft light looks okay let's go with hard light and then just drop the opacity so that the designs aren't sticking out too much there you go so kind of a way to create an intricate rug uh is to you know add a texture first put a rug on top of it change the blend mode works pretty good I think, let's see here, yeah, this looks pretty good. So that's gonna lead up to it. Let's say that you wanna create kind of something that divides this rug. Maybe it's not a rug at all. Maybe there's like a liner that goes across. You can piece together some some stuff. Oh yeah, overlay over the stairs, love that trick. Absolutely, it's a good one. And, and we'll do that too. I actually like that trick. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Let's do that. So we're gonna take a basic rug like this. And we're gonna scale it and size it up to where it kind of goes all the way across like this. And then we might have to do some changes. Just so you know, this is a little bit of work. So we might have to make some changes. Let's make sure that it's above the dais, first step. And we wanna make sure that this stuff is above the dais, or not above, but above the rug. Okay, and we're gonna take this and we're gonna go through the blend modes and we're gonna see which one works best with the stairs. There's a whole various options. Let's go ahead and make sure that I'm lining it up properly. There we go. Okay, so there's that. Let's go change the blend modes. And sometimes different blend modes work. It's up to you. So there's overlay right here, but you'll notice that the rug kind of shows right here. 
So you want to look at options. Maybe you want to put it right here so that it stops and it's above uh, the thrones. So there's all these different varying options that you can choose from. Let's go over and just go through the various blend modes. Maybe we can find one that will work best. If not, then we might want to just consider adding stairs from uh, pre-existing stamps because they do exist. So you can do that if you don't want to add that. Or you can use the path tool as well. There's so many different methods of going about it. Uh, we can totally use the path tool. Let me show you how to do that. You want to go with red like this. Turn off any shadows that you have. And I do believe overlay is the proper blend mode that you can do. Let me just double check. And we'll go with width size up pretty big. And I'll just show you real quick what that looks like. So with this would just go over like this. We're going to fill it in. This might take a few seconds. So I kind of made an intricate. So usually that trick works pretty good. Uh, the, the carpet trick works really good for stairs. But if your stairs are kind of like custom made like my day is here, then rug might not always work. So, but if you're just doing a regular staircase, uh, I totally recommend doing that. It just depends on what you're doing. It's circumstantial, but overall it's a really good trick, I would say. Very good trick. I've used it many times. I know people here have as well. Okay, so now you have that. And we can change things up. You can change the, the blend mode. Uh, you can change uh, the opacity so it's not so crazy. I realize there's a mistake right here. My bad. But for now, we'll go with that. I think that works okay. So now we have a little bit of carpet covering that. And if you want, we could have done more too. The whole dais could technically have carpet on it. I'm not going to worry about it, but I think it works. Drawing with the path tool. Now we're thinking with portals. <laughs> good one. Okay, so 38 changes. We're still pretty good. I think we can keep going a little bit more. I'm going to rotate some chairs just a little bit to kind of remove some of that symmetry. I don't like too much symmetry. I think it can be kind of annoying on the eye. So I try to often um, add asymmetrical elements into it. So now that we've added that, we've kind of added this nice entrance way, we might want to consider adding in other things on the walls, additional chairs, stuff like that. Oh, Brass Lock, thanks for joining us. I'll catch you later. Take it easy, okay? Have a great day. Be safe and healthy. All right, let's add in some additional chairs. Let's just build off and maybe radiate from the dais. That's a good way. So let's add in some more chairs. I'll just type chairs right in like that. Perfect. And the chairs are going to pop up and we'll kind of go over that. Let's see, what kind of chairs do we want for... Oh, you know what? This doesn't look right. I think there's supposed to be more than this. I think I need to save and refresh the page is what I need to do. So let's do that. Oh, it was great to have you here, Raslog. Awesome. Okay, we're going to save. We're going to refresh the page. I've done a lot of I've done a lot of changes and a lot of saves, so it's time to refresh the page. We'll open it back up, and then we're going to add in advisor chairs. We're going to add in a whole bunch of stuff. Me personally, I'm not really enjoying this throne room very much, but that's usually how it is for me. I usually don't like the way my compositions look within the first uh, hour or so. We've been doing this for an hour already, and we haven't gotten that far, so this might take a little while. And feel free, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Cheryl. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that from the beginning. SL Mumby, please ask any questions that you might have. we will gladly help you. Sorry, I didn't mention that in the beginning. Saving is going very slowly. I'm going to assume it's just because it's in 4K. I might want to consider when I'm leaving and opening up in 3K to cause less lag so we can speed things up. I don't want this to extend more than about two hours or so. So we're going to quickly get the save done and we're going to reopen it in 3K. Just unfortunately 4K editing is just too laggy on the device for right now. We'll switch over to 3. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. If you have any suggestions, put that in the chat. I don't mind. I always take it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Chris the, the, Chris the Miss. I also dislike my maps until more of the details make it feel more refined with layers and character. Absolutely. I totally agree. And it's a good time to mention that because 
you know, if you don't like your map at first, just to let you know that's normal. I don't want you to like, because what will happen is, is if you hate your map every time you start it, then you'll never get a map done. So always, maybe if you want, take a break. If you're getting frustrated with it, uh, look some up some references, but don't give up. Keep going, okay? Don't stop because otherwise you're just going to have a huge gallery, a huge My Maps page filled with maps that you uh, that you never use or haven't finished. And believe me, I know a little bit about that. I've got a couple myself, so I totally understand. So, you know, so there are some tips and tricks that I can mention to you, by the way, to make you excuse me feel a little more comfortable with what your map looks like in the beginning. And that is if you don't... If, is that you can focus on one section and make it look really good. So like I actually like the overall setup in the dais and so that's making me feel encouraged. So if the, if you're feeling good with that, then keep adding details to that section. Keep it going so that way you show a sense of enthusiasm in the map. So if you feel like, ah, oh, I hate the walls but I love this area, then do that, okay? So I'm satisfied with the dais. And I'm going to keep adding more details to the dais to keep me uh, kind of enthused and want me to keep going. So that's one of those tips that you can do to keep working on a map. It's just focus on one section and make it look good. And that way you have a standard of what you, how good you want other sections on the map to look, right? So you're, you're happy with the dais. This is the amount of detail and texturing you want the whole map to look like. So kind of use it as a reference and a guide. So focus on one section at a time if you're easily discouraged by it. If you're not easily discouraged, it's not a problem. Follow your normal uh, strategy or not strategy, your normal uh, process, okay? So there's always that. So maybe let's just throw in some details right on the dais just to show what I'm talking about. Let's add in a crown. And there should be some crowns in here. So we can put a crown just right here like that you can put uh, some cushions maybe you want a pillow on there you know I mean come on if these are Royals they don't want their butts sitting on hard hard ground right they want to sit on something comfortable so maybe we want to do that so we want to put down this thing we want to maybe go into filters change the hue to it's a color that's a little more acceptable okay and we might maybe want to put this nice cushion for Royal bonds right here so now you got something to sit on nice and comfy we'll also change that brightness just a bit and let's just say that crown is just sitting right on top of that ba -ba! there you go so you got a crown sitting on that seat look people don't want to people don't want to sit on concrete chairs man they want to sit down on something nice and cushy i don't want my butt to be like ah this hurts so bad please something cushy my chair that I have is super, super, super cushy. So it feels super nice. I like it. Okay. All right. Yeah, we've added some details there. You know what? The king's irrelevant. We're not going to do anything special to his throne. The queen is everything. So we're just not going to add anything special to their throne. Sorry. But you're just going to have to, just going to have to deal. That's the way it is. For new viewers who have arrived, we're working on a throne room. So welcome, everybody. And if you kind of missed, you can always go back to the video. And don't forget, we always add these videos to our YouTube channel as well. So after this video, I'll be up to up after the stream, I'll be uploading it to YouTube. So you can see it in its entirety there as well. And don't forget on stream on uh, on Twitch, you can also use the highlight tool to do clips from things and I'll make sure to add those as well. Okay, so where were we? We were working on decorating the dais and I actually think this is pretty good. There are more things that we could add to it, but I think for now this works pretty good. So where let's think about the next section that we wanna work on and I would just assume maybe these walls right here. I do like the idea of some windows. Windows are nice that will allow some, some natural lighting that we can mix with some not natural lighting from candles and stuff like that. So let's let's do that first. And we're gonna to wanna to think about where we want to put windows and which direction the light is coming from too. So let's type in windows. We're gonna just type that right in. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of options here. Let's just expand all and check out the options. 
Now, we've already kind of chose this color scheme of brass, so I think it might be a cool idea just to stick with that. And let's maybe use this brass glass window right here. I think this looks pretty good. Let's set it up to 100%, and we're gonna to wanna to scale it up properly to it's where it's just slightly bigger than the wall. And we're also gonna to wanna to be able to put them uh, in proper places. So let's think about where we wanna do that. Let's maybe put one there and then put one here. So let's just assume that maybe there's about maybe two or three windows on each side, so that equals about six windows if you want. And I'm gonna leave additional room so that we can like adorn uh, the walls with other things. So if you wanna put statues or maybe pillars or tapestries or anything like that, okay? So now that we've added that, I can go in and just copy and paste both of these, all three of these, copy, paste, and just put them right across like this. So now you have some windows and the windows are necessary. We want to have some kind of light source, light sources. So we'll end up deciding which, uh, which side of the light it's coming through. Um, since it's in this shape, it's going to have to be one side or the other. Both sides probably won't do. We'll just make sure that the light's going through one of these sides and we can decide on that later. Okay. Now let's also think about what we're gonna put in between each of these things. So there are options. We can put statues, we can put pillars, we can put, uh, you can put in some shrubbery, like some potted plants. Uh, you can put in more chairs. You can put in anything that you want. It just depends on the overall setup, the layout, and what you're looking for, okay? So let's go with pillars. I kinda like that idea, and I think half pillars would be a good idea. So if I just type in pillars in the search bar like this, you're gonna see that there are some half pillars from uh, the Gothic pack. And that actually might work pretty good in my opinion. I, I like half pillars, they might look good. So first, let's just figure out what a full pillar would look like first on the map. And that way we can decide how big a half pillar would be. So this right here is almost five by five feet. It's an absolutely massive, pillar, right? It's just huge. So maybe we don't want something that big. Maybe we want it maybe only one quarter that size. So we might want to go like this or put it up this size. Now with a wall pillar, the wall pillar could be a little bit larger. It's only half a pillar. So that's okay. If you wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I think that's okay. But a full on pillar, you probably wouldn't want it to be five by five, which is that grid that we put on there. So if I put it up against here, you'll see there's a lot of room. Now it is popular in architectural design to maybe put two pillars up against each other like this. It's a popular architectural element. You just put two pillars side by side like this up against the wall like that. And if you want, you can put pillars adjacent to it like this going across so that it kind of looks like a chapel or church setup where you have the side like this is like there's a second floor above it. I'm not going to add any kind of access to a second floor because I think that kind of defeats the purpose of making sure that the royals in this room are protected. Because if there's a floor or rafters above, an assassin can hide up there, shoot an arrow, poison darts, fart all over them. I don't know. Whatever your method of assassinating is, I don't care. Whatever your pick. 30 Chipotle burritos and it, you know it had a bad night and that's how you want to take the guy down it doesn't matter whichever way that you want to go with it but me personally i'm probably not going to put any kind of a room to a second floor so i think that works out okay and i'm going to also just copy and paste and put these in between each one just like that and then i'm just going to choose all of them as this copy paste and then all you have to do is just flip them with the flipping tool like that, flip, and then put these back on like that. So, and you wanna make sure that they're lined up properly because that, it looks really weird if they're not. So now you have these kind of pillars right here like this. And if you want, you could, I think there are even kind of corner pillars from other ones, but, or you can just take a pillar like this and just flatten it. So that way there's a corner pillar, just flatten it to the BG layer. I'll do that real quick just to show you real quick so if i go like this take this flatten to bg layer sorry fg layer you'll get this corner pillar just right there just like that i'm going to undo that because i don't really want that there so i'll remove that 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and delete that. So now that we have these pillars, we have this, we have this giant room right here. This door is utterly freaking massive. It's about two people wide. It's four or five people wide. It's massive. <laughs> no, it's not an English throne room. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller because that door is just so incredibly massive. So I think we can just make it just a little bit smaller. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. It was utterly massive. <laughs> no, good sir. This is not an English throw room. Okay, I'm going to have to work on that one. Let's see here. I think the last bit is we still want to add two more pillars, right? Maybe right here against here or we could add uh, some green element and I would absolutely recommend adding in some green red and green looks good and so does that brass so it's a good color scheme and adding in some vegetation into your rooms really gives it some character so I always recommend adding a little bit of vegetation especially in these more ornate kind of throne room settings you would kind of expect that or French mind you well it's not any kind of historically accurate throne room I'm afraid <laughs> and that's just the way it is. I'm a history. I'm a huge history buff, by the way, and I would love to follow that, but not everyone is. Personally, I like to really add more fantastical elements to my maps because uh, people, not everyone's j jives history. Not everyone finds history interesting. I personally love history, and if people want historically accurate stuff, just ask. But as a, but you know. A lot of maps would look kind of dull with historical accuracy. You know, the fantasy element is what really gives maps that pop. Personally, how I know you like my throne room. I'm not offended, believe me. <laughs> I am not easily offended. Not at all. Okay, I need to make sure that these are also connected. I realized I did a boo-boo. So I have to kind of connect these real quick. Yikes, look at that. Hey, look, this pillar is just floating off of this wall. How does that work? Come on. All right, I'm just gonna zoom in here. Look at that, just naughty, naughty. How could I? Oh, yeah, look at that, just hovering right off of there. Mm. Tis a pity. Honestly, I'm not a giant fan of the tile floor, and I do think that I'll end up kind of changing it. It's just me personally. We might end up end up changing it or add in some extra elements into it to make the floor more interesting. But we'll, we'll add it in there. And of course, filters always help to really get everything to blend together. If you haven't, go check out that Understanding. After this, I demand that you immediately watch Understanding Filters stream. <laughs> Do it immediately or I will be so mad. <laughs> no, go watch that after this if you want to understand filters because absolutely filters help so much. Filters are going to do a lot more work for you instead of you doing all the work. That's why I absolutely recommend watching that, that stream. And there's highlights in there as well if you don't want to watch the whole dang thing. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got so far. Let's go ahead and add in some, let's add in that kind of barrier that I was talking about so that uh, only the king can kind of get, only certain people can get to it. And so what I was thinking of doing is kind of taking an element from a cathedral and there's a wooded section uh, that's barred off and it's called a sacristy. And I'm going to use a cathedral element and put it here into the throne room. And I'm going to use wood to create a little bit more color to it. And there is a particular wooden uh, wall that I think looks really good uh, as kind of a, a barrier and that's these wooden walls right here that have posts in them and I kind of like that and so I'm going to take a series of wooden uh, walls and create a very clearly a fenced area that only that no one can really access except for specific people so that's going to be my goal here I'm going to turn off these and I'm going to first just create one half and then rotate it and put it on the other side so I'm going to take this like this and we're gonna maybe create something a little more interesting shape like maybe create some angles it might look interesting so we got an angle here and I might want to create a swivel part of a door too because if the king if the king uh, can't get out of the gated area himself or queen sorry oh my bad if the queen the, you, you, do you want the queen in the flowing gown to be hopping the fence and then fall on her face I mean that'd be really funny and I'd, I'd probably enjoy watching that 
I, I'd enjoy watching someone of royal blood falling on their face. That would be freaking hilarious, but that's not going to work so well, okay? So we're going to want to maybe add in a gate somewhere so that when these people run off the dais, they open up a little gate and they go right to the trap door, right? So we're going to be doing that. So let's add a little gated fence area, the whole thing. Let's just do this, we'll flip and rotate it. There we go. Put it up against here like this and just make sure that I line it up properly. There we go. And then I'll put in some more of these going across. Oopsie, let's just fix that. Bloop, bloop. There we go. All right, this looks good. Oops, I might have to move some stuff. Naughty me. Let's go ahead and move this. I don't want to select that, and I don't want to select that. Oops, I kind of did by accident already. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste these. I'm not even sure if I want it to go fully around, around it. Uh, maybe even just have it just split the room, because this looks kind of weird now that I look at it. It's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to look at something and you're going to be like, oh, this is actually garbage. Why did I do it? <laughs> that happens. Let me tell you, that, that happens. I know all about that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and rotate. Put one here and maybe connect it against the wall, like right here or something. I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll figure it out. We're going to figure it out. There we go. Uh, you know what? Actually, I still am not really a fan of that. I still think maybe instead we can go with just putting it flat going all the way across instead. Oh, I kind of want that gated area. I'm going to put make sure it goes below. Kind of an awkward place to put this underneath where a window is, so we might want to reconsider changing that. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll look into that. Okay, so this is kind of a fenced area. So if you want to see the king and queen, that's obviously not going to work for you. And it doesn't have to be wood material. It can be whatever material that you want. It's entirely up to you. But this is going to be kind of some kind of barrier in which um, the queen or the monarchs are going to be kind of protected. And maybe we want to even give it a little bit more room away like this so that it's a little bit farther away. We don't want... We don't want uh, people to get too close to their majesties. All right. Stay behind the dotted line, please. You, 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 sir, stay behind the dotted line. If you cross this dotted line, immediate beheading. No questions asked. I'm afraid that is just the way it is right here. See this dotted line? This is execution line. Don't touch this or your life will be in peril. So we're going to have to write that down. Maybe put some caution tape up. You know, because this place is a potential crime scene at all times. Yeah, there's social distancing. Yeah, that's fine, okay? it's it's uh, it, That's what it is, okay? So you make sure that no one crosses the dotted line. Otherwise, it's immediate beheadings. And as much as we like immediate beheadings here, we're not going to do that, okay? Let's, I mean, no, no, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't justify that. That's bad. Beheadings are bad. <laughs> okay, so there's that gated area right here. And we can put in some kind of gate or a door or something that kind of represents that, hey, this is how you get in. And this is less work, too. So now these people, the, whoever these their majesties, can now escape, or whoever the monarchs are, can escape kind of easily by just, you know, flying right off, just hopscotching, jumping, pole vaulting off the chair, whichever your method of jumping off a chair is. Me, personally, I like to pole vault off my chair. That's just my personal preference, but hey, whatever you got works for me. I'm not going to judge, okay? I'm not judgmental at all, okay? Maybe you like to use a spring. I don't know. Maybe you rollerblade off your chair. I don't know. It, it's, it's whatever works, okay? So we got that. That works good. And I would say what might be kind of fun is that maybe the way to open this door is to turn the page. Like it's a magical door, right? You have to use turn to a certain page to open the door, okay? So that'd be kind of cool. It's an enchanted door. You gotta go to page 66, 666, whatever number to kind of open that door. Mark of the Beast, yo. Blood for the Blood Gods. I mean, I mean, I don't know why I went there. So anyway, just opening up a page will kind of open up this door, okay? So let's do that. And we've added in this. Let's go ahead and put in some chairs for some advisors. That was what we were supposed to do. And of course, I got I got off track. What do you expect? I expect this is what I do. Now, should they have fancy cushy chairs? No. 
Let's give him stone chairs. Ha ha. The advisors get the uncomfortable bony chairs. Ha ha. Suckers. Sorry, just the way it is. Ha ha. So we'll put a couple here. Want some over here and maybe one over here like this. We can rotate a little bit more, one like that. Kind of give it a little more curve. Yeah, let's do it. Or you could just say, just make one each or two each. I don't know, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, it's up to you. It's like, look, this person's trying to talk to this person over here. Hey, you down there! Hello, how are you today? So you kind of yell at him, you know. How am I supposed to have your ear, your majesty, if I cannot hear you from way up there on the dais? I'm going to pull out the loudspeaker. Is this thing on? Hello? Hello? Hey, whatever. We're social distancing, okay? You're going to have to raise your voice. There's no secrets in this court. There's no secrets in this court. We just yell at everybody. Okay, this is, this is open. We got... For your requests here, it's going to work just fine. Okay, we got that. We got this. I'm just going to take a step back. And this is, of course, as always, subject to change. Hey, look, you know what? The assassin get nice and close to the advisors. <laughs> this little section right here. Hey, I don't really like you very much. Boom! Gotcha! <laughs> Oopsie. Hey, look, maybe the majesties are like, we don't like this advisor. We want them to... I was trying to get the king, the king or queen, but I ended up killing the advisor. Oops. <laughs> it's like, uh, it was all plotted. <laughs> it's all part of the evil plan, right? <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Let's see here. I'm trying to think about what other things might be necessary here. I'm thinking about maybe adding some additional stuff right here, like maybe a bench with some other stuff, uh, maybe a place where people can kneel down and worship the person. I don't know. Maybe your leader is a, a deity. I don't know. It's up to you. I think in the temple pack, they do have these like things in cathedrals where you like kneel down and they have cushions for your, for your knees. I think the Catholics have it. There it is right there. A prayer bench, I think. There you go. A prayer bench. You know what? These royals are stuffy, like most royals, and they're kind of full of themselves, so they want people to worship them. So we'll put some kneelers right here, some prayer benches. Bow before me or suffer the consequences, right? Let's see, maybe even rotate another one, put it on right here like this. Oh, yeah, there you go. We got some worshiping going on here. That's right, you stuffy royals, you. Can't have enough homage, can you? I see. There we go. So we got some kneeling thing going here. You don't have to add any of this stuff. I'm just adding this in for fun. You don't have to add any of this stuff. It's just for my own story. But I think it works okay so far. And if we don't like the kneelers, we can just remove all that stuff. I don't even know if I like it all there anyway. We're probably losing people. Oh no, where did everyone go? <laughs> I'm going to change up the texture. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm losing focus. Let's get back on track here. All right. We've added in some kneelers here. Subject to change. I might end up deleting it. I'm not 100% satisfied. It might just be because the texture doesn't match uh, anything yet. So we'll go ahead and look into changing that texture. And I'm going to go, I think, with something a little bit more directional. Like this one right here might work pretty good. I actually really like this texture. It looks kind of cool. And maybe we can put more uh, thrust and direction. So let's go into that size. Now what I want to do is size it up to where it matches. It kind of lines up just a little bit. Like right there I think looks kind of good. Oh no! That's not what I want to go back. Let's just scale it down a little bit more. Kind of get it where we want it. Oh, so slow. Oh, so slow. There we go. I think that'll do it. And I'm just going to apply it. And I'll have to retexture some things, obviously, because I retextured. And one thing I could do is go with uh, the contrast like this, and that will kind of uh, remove a little bit of the line work so that we can get the reflection of that um, of that chandelier. So we're going to be putting that in there too. Don't forget that. So let me go over to FG. I'm just going to do the whole thing, and I can repaint uh, the carpet stuff. So I'm just going to apply that real quick. And obviously, like I said, I'll have to repaint 
in uh, the carpet stuff. So we'll go back in and fix that. So we'll go in here. There we go. Fix that part. Fix that part. That looks fine. We'll go in here and make sure I line it up with this. I think that looks good. Press enter. There we go. Okay. And we might want to make changes to this. We're not sure yet. And we might even change this wood because it might not go well or just delete the whole thing. I'm really rather uncertain about it. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, let's see here. We might not add in that throne stuff or this kind of stuff. I don't really, not really sure how I feel about it quite yet. Didn't really turn out the way I had kind of hoped. Throne rooms can be kind of frustrating sometimes. I can tell you right now, it's a lot of work. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna remove that. I think that's okay. Um, we can add in other defenses in a different way. I'm gonna add in my chandeliers and then maybe figure out some other stuff in real quick. Let me add in chandelier. If we have one, oopsie, where is it? I think this is it right here, rustic chandelier. And I don't know if we wanna put lights at the top. There's this, this one right here that might suit better to it. So if you want two light sources, maybe hanging like right here in the center, like this, let's turn off the opacity for now and just place them. And then we can kind of mess either with blend modes or use opacity. Either one works for me. I'm kind of cool with it. Maybe drop opacity like we were doing before. Oopsie, why did it not select both of them? That is bizarre. Whoa. Uh-oh. Getting some serious lag here. Sorry about that. Let's change this opacity. There we go. And what we're kind of doing is kind of creating this idea that there's a reflection in the floor of these, these chandeliers. And again, the floor is subject to change. Always had a difficult time with throne rooms. This is actually one of the most difficult streams I've had to do. <laughs> I'm glad to catch you here when I'm most vulnerable. <laughs> All right, we've added that. Let's go ahead and add in some light sources as well. You would expect that. So I'll go ahead and type in light. Thanks for bearing with me here. Okay, where are we at? So we added some light sources. I'm gonna put one just right below it because this chandelier should be giving off light. So I'll put it down like this and make sure it's set to layer five like this. And I'm actually gonna remove my, uh, my windows right there because this right here is the light source that we're working with. It could be daytime, it could be nighttime, it depends. If it's nighttime, then I would kind of expect uh, more natural light to kind of light up the room. But if it's nighttime, then obviously the chandeliers are gonna be your choice. So it's really up to you what time of day that you're going with. If it's nighttime, again, just kind of use the lights from the chandeliers. And let's not forget about the light for the candle right here. Excuse me. I'm gonna put that right on top like this. So we have a light source there. Let's just zoom out. Let me take a look. Now we're gonna go ahead and do some of the texturing with the walls so that I can show you how that works. So normally when you are doing shadowing, there are two ways that you can texture with shadows. Just use a black texture, but the more black you use, the more it's gonna drown out uh, your ground texture. So another way to do texturing with shadows is to, to use the same shot, the same texture that you're using for the floor and just dropping the brightness like that, okay? And then go ahead and use your circle brush, make sure your softness is up. And I usually like to go about 30% or so. And then I go in and I just apply the texture like this and we'll just see what it looks like first, like this. And what we're doing is kind of creating a little bit more depth by adding in some shadows along this walls. And this is really going to help to make the map look a little bit better, in my opinion, because texturing really helps. And we're not going to do too much texturing because I want to mention again that filters are really the way that you want to apply the maximum amount of what you would normally do with texturing. So I'm going to go in and then just go over. Once you've gone over one swipe, like over the whole thing, you'll go in with a second swipe and a little bit of a smaller brush and really make sure that those corners and any areas where there's not a lot of light, you're gonna put in shadows. So if there's light right here 
and there's not much light up here, make sure that you kind of put some of this into the shadows. So you can just kind of paint like this and you can go with a lower opacity, I'll take it down. So if you feel that's too much, you can undo it and then go with a lower brush opacity and then go in here like this and get that darker kind of texture in like this. Okay, I'm gonna go in behind the dais as well. These are light sources right here. So you're gonna expect some shadow behind the dais like that. So we'll go in, apply some strokes like this. It's a little, little too much work. Let's boost it up a little bit more. There we go, that's a bit better. See some shadowing behind the dais. If you make a mistake, all you can go, you can just go right back in with the same ground texture and just reapply it in the areas that you screwed up. Okay, and believe me, you're gonna make mistakes. It happens, I make mistakes all the time when I'm doing uh, texturing. It's just, it's just gonna happen. You're never not gonna make some mistake or another. And just, you know, some mistakes look awesome. It's like some of the best things that I feel like I've made and other people have confirmed this as well. They're like, oh, I made this mistake, but it ended up being super rad. Like, it's super cool. You're like, whoa, what? This was actually really cool. Heck yeah. It, believe me. And trust me, it happens. It it happens. Okay, let's go ahead and add in some more shading here. And right away, you notice that the shading just really, really, really helps. Already, these walls started popping out. The dais is popping out a little bit more. So, always remember that shadowing is really going to help things pop out. Okay, and you know what? If you don't like your map, the other tip, remember the first tip I had mentioned was if you're not liking the map and you feel like giving up, the first tip was to focus on one area and make it at the standard that you want the rest of the map to be at so you can use it as a standard reference. Two, you can start shadowing right away. If you put your walls in and some stamps in, you can start uh, painting in your shadows so that way it will give it a little bit more depth and you can be a little more satisfied with it. So that's my second tip about making sure you don't lose interest in your map is you can start shadowing right away uh, instead of doing it in the end because then you start losing patience and stuff like that. So there are some tips that you can do to keep yourself focused because believe me, you will lose focus. That's going to happen. <laughs> There's so much things going on. There's so much distractions. You, you will lose focus. It will get hard. So a good way to do that is to follow some tips and tricks that help you to stay focused. So I'm going to go in and just keep texturing. I'm going to keep adding in more textures like this. And I even want to add in front right here like this because you want to make sure that you have ambient occlusion. If you want something to look like it is not flat. You always want to make sure to add this, this thick, kind of a dark line of ambient occlusion, right? So I'll go like this, and you'll see how dark this edge is. So I put this dark edge in here, and I just kind of realized that these steps are massive. In comparison to the chairs, these steps are huge. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, yeah, it's just like me to screw it up. <laughs> Okay, so we'll add in these dark shadows and, and then I'll zoom out and I'll show you how ambient inclusion helps to make sure that uh, your objects are going to pop out. Now it is a little bit of extra work and you don't have to do it, but I can guarantee you that it will help. So now let's go ahead and just zoom out and you'll notice that those dark shadows just made that dais just boom, pop right up real fast, okay? So that's something you want to keep in mind. And yes, absolutely, you can put light sources in uh, in early too. That will also help for you to dictate the shadows and where you want to put stuff. Um, and yes, deuses can have very large steps. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so now I'm going to add in that ambient occlusion again right here. Just to make sure that these walls have that dark. So it shows like there's a little bit of that. So we'll add in just a little bit of dark around here and on along these edges. And if you don't like that, you don't have to, you can remove it. I'm gonna take a look here. I think that's okay. Make sure that, that there's a nice thick kind of dark line edging things. And that's again, that's gonna be that ambient occlusion. 
Again, contrast is absolutely key as an artist. You want to add in contrast. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put in some shadow in here. You would expect this passage right here to be dark because the people are going to be trying to get away. So that's the place to put that. And I'm going to zoom out, take a look at where we're at. 199 changes. Let's make some saves. And then we can kind of figure out where to move next, what things to add, adding more details, more lighting, uh, remove these lights and switch to natural lighting. We'll see which one looks better. We can maybe put some natural lighting on the left, or on the right, and then put the candelabras or whatever on the right, on the left, and then see how which one looks better. So we're going to do a side by side because sometimes it just depends on the mood and the feel that you want. Maybe it's an early morning, then you've been summoned by the majesties to do a, a quest, a task, a, a, a job, or whatever, right? It's, you've been woken up early. Maybe you're woken up early because you and the other players are going to have to catch a boat or whatever, maybe a flight to San Diego. I don't know. Whatever it is, Okay, um, so adding in some kind of story element, time of day, all these things are really helpful to give more character. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and then put in another light source that's just maybe emanating or even a window shadow might work. I think these have window shadows, let me check. Nope, just these stained glass. So maybe this window will work just fine like this. So if you want light coming out in a natural sense, the natural lighting coming from outside, then we'll just go ahead and make them popping out from the window like this. Now, if you do that, that's obviously going to change the shadow. So just keep that in mind. And I don't want it to be so bright. So I'll actually drop the opacity down just a bit. Okay, so this is where, let's say that there's light coming from over here. Obviously, you wouldn't have light coming from here. Otherwise, unless there's two suns. If there's two suns on your world, then it's okay to put another light source emanating out of this wall because you've got or coming out of this from this window because you've got two suns but make sure that you make that clear right honestly i don't actually like the reflection too much i might remove it i'm not so sure let's just put the other one in here like this and then delete the light source and just see how that looks you could say that it's like this let's see what that looks like yeah i think that's okay you might even want to consider rotating them just for fun just a little bit and what also might be fun is showing how they connect to uh, the wall. So in other words, how are these chandeliers staying up? Is there a place or some chain where it's hanging? So we can show that to get more details. Let's do that. That'll be fun. And I think chain would be the way to go. So first we want to put something on the wall where the chain is going to be. So like this. So you could say that instead of making it straight, maybe give it some angle so it looks more interesting. Let's make sure we turn off that. Let's make it a little bit darker because it seems to be in the shadows like here. And so I kind of don't want it to be so bright. So we'll go into place or into filters and just drop the brightness just a bit like that. And then we'll take the chain like this and we can put it in somewhere like this. And I'm going to turn the shadow off as well. I don't really want that. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. So we'll just test it out and see how, how it goes. If it doesn't, then we'll just remove the idea. It's fine by me if it doesn't work. You know, I don't think that's going to work. But at least you know where the hookup's going to be to where the chain's going to be. Because I think the problem is, is I want the chain to be underneath. Because technically the chain would be showing... It'd be a reflection. You wouldn't even be able to see the chain on the top part of it. But I have this set at a low opacity, so I would see the chain underneath it. So that just isn't going to work. But it's okay. It's all right. You can just say that maybe it's just attached to the ceiling, and there's no real way to adjust it. So that's okay. We can do that. I'm not going to be heartbroken. <laughs> I'm not going to lose it. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. So light source is coming in from here. And then with that, of course, we have to factor in uh, the light sources, like figure in where shadows are going to be. So you would expect a little bit of shadows here. So we'll have to go in and paint some of that stuff. Again, drop it nice and low. We'll make it fairly large and just say that the light is right here. So put in your shadows like right here. You got some shadow going on here. Maybe a little bit of shadow in this corner. Put some shadow in this corner like this 
So now that you've added that light sources, you can absolutely add in your shadows. And let's go ahead and do that again right here. Let me make sure I got the right size and kind of just make sure that there's a little bit of shadow right here. So that, that dais is like that. And then we're also going to want to take in some objects right here and give them directional shadows. So we'll have to go ahead and touch up on all these items right here. This one, oopsie, I missed it. Get that thrown. And then this one right here. Go to object and we'll set it to zero. We're going to go down, increase the brightness and go this way a little bit. And we might even want to go up just a little bit, I think. Move it just a little bit more to the left. Now, when you're changing shadows, you got to be very careful with this because objects that are really big and objects that are really small are going to have their shadows a bit differently. A really large object, you can take extremes with these offsets. But if you have a small object scaled up, scaled down really small, you'll notice that the shadow can actually decouple from the object. And that's something you want to avoid. I'll give you a quick example of what I mean by that. So you have this thing right here. You'll notice that it's really small. I'll take another one and I'll make it very big. Copy paste. So here's a big one like that. And then now I put these two together and I go and I want to adjust the object shadows. Now see what happens when I move the shadows, right? Larger shadows, they stay closer to the object. But if you do a smaller one, the shadow gets decoupled from the object. So just keep in mind that when you have multiple objects selected, and especially when they're extremes and sizes, you don't want to accidentally cause one of your shadows to decouple from a stamp because that's going to look really weird. So always kind of factor that in when you're resizing uh, stamp when you're uh, selecting the shadow options for a stamp. Okay, so just kind of factor that in. That's always important to remember. And then we want to also factor in these other stamps as well. They need to make sure that we stick to uh, the shadows from the light source. So we'll move it to the side a bit like this. And we'll go a little bit up. And I'm going to move these up a layer because I actually want the shadow of this one to show up on right here on the dais a bit because I want to show that. So you have these light sources. I think this one's, these two are moved a little bit further up, too far up. So let's move them down and a little bit more this way. I think that will do. Okay. So we've got that light sources already looking a lot better. Thank goodness. Okay. Where are we at? 1136. Okay. We can probably get this done within the next 30 minutes or so. Hey, if you guys have suggestions, hey, let me know, okay? Don't be shy. Speak up. Speak up, my friends. We are all allies here. Okay, we're letting this save. And we'll move on to some last bits here. I want to add in some statues. I want to add in some stuff. We moved this to the side. You see how we removed this, these windows right here? So maybe we want to put something fun against the wall here like a statue or something. We've already got uh, those ones. So maybe these, these statues would work kind of good. You can put that down right there like that. Let's just see what it looks like first when I put it down. It looks okay to me. Let's add the next one. Just see what it looks like real first. First, yeah, that looks okay. Can't really see this anymore. So we might want to consider moving these somewhere else, maybe to up here like this. And maybe there's even two of them instead, copy paste like this, so that way you get some full lighting during the day. So that's kind of nice, or, or during the nighttime when you have uh, not you have no natural lighting, just the kind of moonlight, which is really the sun. So we'll have that. So you can go in, obviously, and remove these light sources if you want it to be a nighttime. So there's that. Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna add in some more chairs. We can maybe add in some pillars. We can add in some railing. We can add in a whole bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of options. I also want to factor in maybe adding a little bit more shadow work. So, and I think I want to do that shadow work over here. Just a little bit more shadow over here. Like this. Nope, that's a little bit too much. Let's go down with a lower size and then boost it up. 
like this. We're gonna to touch up some shadow, some shadow areas like this. I'm trying to see if the light source goes this way, this way. Okay. This is that fun part where you kind of figure out what is what by adding these shadows in. It's kind of nice to add in your extra shadow work. And you can also include making it brighter as well if you wanted to add in more bright spots. So you could go in, go to filters, increase the brightness, and now you can add in light highlights if you want, but only on textures. We can go into highlights with a path tool. Absolutely. Oh, which one you didn't realize you could do that? Which one? Let me know. Maybe I missed it. Let's go in with this larger one and just kind of add in a lighter color. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do this lighter color and I'm applying it like this so that it looks like there's some more light in there. There we go. Let's put it also right here. I want to add in that little bit of light like this. We're going to add in some lighter spots so that it represents light. So you got some lighter spots here and maybe right here. There we go. Okay. There we go. The shading is looking a lot better. Oh yeah, much, much, much better. That works good for me. Let's go ahead and apply some filters. This is not the last. We're just going to see, because what I want to do is kind of make sure that these kind of blend together well. And so there are th kind of three or four go-tos that I like to use. The first one is clarity because it really makes things pop out. It gives it that color. You see that those yellows have popped out. That red has popped out. All those things really help. I don't know, what's the so swanky pants? Hey, so swanky pants. Honestly, masking always perplexes me. I've been experimenting with it as of late. You know what? I think a tutorial on the mask tool would just be a great idea in general. Uh, and I think next month, uh, there is a full on editor demo, which we're gonna go over every single tool, uh, come up with demo maps to use for each tool. So we'll be doing a full on editor tutorial probably next month. And this will really, really help people to really understand what each tool is and use cases for it because really there isn't really one use case for every single thing. Usually you can do a lot of different things with different tools like the path tool is a great example. So we'll be doing that. And of course, we'll be highlighting to make sure there's clips. So instead of watching it from beginning to end, super long, going through all, each tool, you'll be able to pick a little clip that's gonna cover the, that tool in that way. It'll be so much easier for you to navigate the editor because you'll know what each tool is and what its use cases are. So like I said, I added clarity. Now, if I remove clarity, you'll see a big difference. You see, it makes things a bit brighter. It makes that red pop out. It makes those yellows pop out. And I really like that. So clarity is always a really nice one. Now there's a lot of grays going on in here. And I don't really like that. I don't like that there's a lot of gray in here. So there are some options that we can take to mitigate that, that gray. And the, the first one is you could use cool warm. And cool warm is going to add some um, kind of purplish to the gray to it. So we can go up to here and increase it all the way. And you'll see that there are some purples and purples work well with yellow. And I think that looks okay. So there's that option. Let me turn it off so you can see the difference. So that's with, without, and then with. Okay. Now, if you don't like that option, there's also a red sky option, which is really going to give a kind of a reddish tint. Okay. And that's going to give everything that reddish tint. And that might be what you're looking for. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want uh, to use a different one. There's a parchment one as well, so, which is gonna add a lot more red. So let me go into add new filter and I'll show you what a parchment will look like. Let's go to that plus sign there. And we go to parchment. Now this is gonna add a lot of red to it. So this is really gonna drown that out. Now you can also change the layer. So if you want, you could have it to where only the, um, only the textures are going to be affected by it. This In this use case, it's not going to work because I do want those grays to be mitigated. So this is that, that deep red. And again, you can change that opacity or of it so that way you don't have as much reds. Personally, I actually kind of care for the warm cool. I think that actually works better. So we're going to go with that. We're going to add a new filter, add in cool warm. And I'm probably going to boost that all the way up 
And I actually might even want to consider even adding a second one to give it even more purple for to it. And so what, and the reason why, again, I've added that purple is just to kind of mitigate the amount of gray that we're dealing with. And I just don't want that. I actually want to add a little bit more color that that purple really, really helps to add that. And of course that clarity filter, I'm going to drop down the warm, cool down just a layer or two to make sure that that um, clarity filter kind of stays on top. There we go. And it's added some nice kind of yellowish, uh, warm, orangish colors here. It's added orangish colors. I really like that. Um, makes it look really nice. Kind of looks like maybe it's either a morning, like it's dawn, or maybe even kind of like around 10 o'clock. So it's up to you, but I really think that that really helped and it really gave, all, again, that overall purple and I just love that. So I'm gonna save these changes and then we'll look at considering and adding more details to make this room look like there's a lot more going on because this room is really big and I kind of feel like there should be a lot more going on here than just the dais, the thrones, and a little in some chairs. We'll throw in some more stuff. I think that would kind of help. All right, we're gonna save. We're at 11.45. So we've been going for about an hour and 45 minutes. Thank you for everyone who's been able to stay the whole time. Newcomers, feel free to ask any questions that you have to Cheryl. It's always great to do that. Throne rooms sometimes have that area for the nobles and the court. Absolutely. Like this technically could also be like a ballroom because it is so large. There is the windows right here. So you could, you know, have people walking around and stuff like that. Uh, if you want, you can add further details that give it uh, more of a story. Like you could put a body and blood maybe right here to make it look like the king has summoned you to solve or the queen to solve a murder mystery. Maybe you want to have one of these um one of these things have collapsed and fallen onto the ground. So there might be a broken chandelier that we can find. Uh, let me see if we have broken one. Broken, we might be able to find a broken chandelier. And if that's the case, then maybe the broken a chandelier fell on somebody and killed them and you're trying to solve that. So it's whichever way, whichever way you want to go about it. Let's see if there is a broken chandelier. And if there is, then I can go ahead and just add that on there. One moment while I try to find that. Now, where are you? Where is it? Oh, you know what? I don't think there is a broken chandelier. Well, that is a bummer. So that's not going to be happening. Well, my mistake. Well, darn. Could make one, but I don't want to do that. That's going to take a while. Maybe I missed it. So I'll just go up just to make sure. There it is. Broken chandelier. Heck yeah, there we go. So you could say that maybe like this chandelier fell down. Obviously you want to remove that because this one fell down. It's not actually reflecting on the ground. This one is actually on, on the ground. Okay, so maybe this one fell down and then we want to add a corpse there maybe, some blood, stuff like that. So we're telling some story here. We don't have to add this, but it's there's a lot of room. And so maybe we can add some fun and interesting element to it. So we'll throw in a corpse. And I think there's some better ones actually in Gothic horror. Wait a second, let's just go out and take a look. Uh, I think those are some better ones. Let me just check. Give it a moment to load. Where are you? Where's the bodies? I need bodies. All right, there we go. So let's say maybe it fell on like a diplomat or something. Just crushed him. Make sure you put this a layer below and we want to always factor in the size. So let's look at the size of this person and we want to scale them up against the chair. That looks about right. Let me just put it up against the tile right here. Yep, that's about, that's about right. That will do just fine. So we'll put the body underneath here or, oh, well, wait a minute. Those candles are massive. Oopsie, I have to refactor that in. <laughs> Oopsie, these are huge. So I have to scale these down just a smidge. Oh, look at the size of that candle. They are massive. And since they're higher up, they're going to be farther away. So I actually have to bring these down. Silly me. What's wrong with me? There we go. And this one can be maybe a little bit bigger because it fell down. 
And I know, yes, the candles are freaking massive, and that's okay. There are actually massive candles. Let's just see where I want to put this body at. Give us the bodies! There we go. We'll put them right there. I just want them to be sticking out like, ah, oh, they got hit. Ugh, that sucks to be you. <gasps> Yikes. Maybe put some blood in there. Because, you know, no one's going to not be bleeding a little bit from uh, having a, however heavy this thing is, <laughs> falling on you. That's probably not going to end well for you, I don't think. Oh, thank you very much. Sherry Bomb, appreciate that. Reminds me of Phantom of the Opera. Oh, hey, heck yeah, Phantom of the Opera is awesome. Very cool. The Phantom of the Opera is here. Well, let's see here. Maybe some, like, blood splatter here. It could be that it crushed their internal organs because I highly doubt it's going to rip skin or anything. So if it's internal organs, maybe you have a little bit of blood, like, coming out of their mouth like this. And let's go ahead and put that down. So a little bit of blood there. Death by chandelier. You know, it was the butler in the throne room with the chandelier. That's what it was. We solved the case, everybody. Ugh. Yeah, it's always the help, right? Why is it always the help? You know what? It was the king with the chandelier in the throne room. They did it. It's their fault, jerk. How could they? Yeah, that's just, I'm sorry. <gasps> oh, no. Why would Her Majesty... Kill that diplomat. Mm, I sense foul play. Who is responsible? Find them! Find them! Okay, so now we gotta mess with shadows. I know, what a turn of events. <gasps> I'm befuddled. Who actually did it? Let's do the shadow as well. So we'll go to object. Got the shadows here. And I'm gonna wanna move it away from here so you can kind of see it. Do this, move it to the side like this. That's a bit dark. I'd say, so let's maybe bloop, drop that down. Let's also take a look at where our light sources are. Light source hitting against here, hitting on here. Okay, so technically, now here's, a, here's some fun tricks right here. So there are two light sources hitting this thing. This is a question that people ask me all the time. How do you make the two, direct, two shadows from different directions? I'm about to show you that right now. We're gonna copy and paste this. We're gonna go ahead and drop the brightness down all the way to zero. And we might want to consider blurring as well, okay? And we're also going to want to change the opacity. Okay, now you have two shadows here. One that's projecting this way. So let's take a look at the light source. So you have a light source right here. So this light source, let's, let's actually take some paths and I'm going to make directions of the light source so that way we have something to work with. And I don't want it to be red. What is this, blood red sources? White, no. Okay, so here's our light sources projecting. It's actually, it's, a, it's actually the, uh, this is actually the, the light, the view, the point of the viewing from the character in the VTT. This person's dead, but they still have a point. They still have view, what the heck? They're undead. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm showing you how to do this shadow thing. So we wanna make sure we have the right one selected, so you have that one. Now you're just gonna copy and paste and then just move it down below again like this. So now that, now the chandelier is not a great example of uh, doing this technique. So let me put down a pillar real quick and I'll show you how that would look, okay? So let's open up, just imagine this crown for instance is a pillar, okay? Just, just use your imagination, okay? Imagination with rainbows, okay? So you put this, we're gonna put this down, okay? Now let's say that you want to show this pillar has shadows. First you wanna do the ambient occlusion, right? So we'll just use object shadows for the ambient occlusion, okay? So there's the ambient occlusion for that. So step one. But what happens if you want to add in shadows for this, okay? Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail for this, but I'll just show you how I do it, okay? So let's bring this down to zero let's just, just imagine this as a shadow of a pillar okay and we're obviously going to drop the opacity down because we don't want it to be too dark okay now you want two shadows so let's just say the light source is over here you want to make two shadows so you would put one here like this and you put another one like this okay so this would mean that there's a light source over here going this way and another light source going 
this way. Okay, now there are different ways to do shadows, projected shadows. You can use a stamp, you can use a path tool, you can use the brush tool. And I think uh, I need to do a full on tutorial for that. If not, I do have guides on how to do shadows. Okay, so it's absolutely essential uh, because it is super hard to make two shadows of something. And usually the way to do it is just to use stamps or the path tool. Though it's the easiest way because with, um, unfortunately with brushing your shadows, you might not be able to brush over a stamp unless it's flattened. So pads do allow you to put it up a layer above a stamp. So that way it's projected on there. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So if I go like this, and I just boost this up a couple layers, you'll notice that the shadow is projected right onto that stamp. You would not be able to do that with, you would not be able to do that with um, your brush tool unless it was flattened. And you know, I try to avoid flattening because flattening means that if you screw up, you have to re-flatten the object. And that's a pain in the royal butt. And speaking of royal butts, let's keep going. All right, so that person fell down. Now one thing, or got hit by this, one thing I recommend that if this thing is higher up than this thing, I recommend taking the body and just dropping the brightness down just a little bit. So that way it's in dis it's kind of contrasting to this. So we might wanna even consider increasing the brightness of this one. There we go, a little bit. And we can remove these things. Real quick pro tip about wanting to be able to select something without selecting something else. If I just wanna select these paths, just select all to remove, and then just select this, the pad. You'll see paths, groups, text, stamps, all. Okay, this is really gonna help you, especially if you have a really busy, 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 busy map. And you don't wanna accidentally select something. So this these selection options are really gonna help you to fine tune your selection so that you won't accidentally select something. Okay, that's really gonna help. So now some other things that I want to do is that I have painted in shadows, okay? But I've noticed that some of these stamps are still rather bright as if they were in the light. So next step with your shadowing is to make sure that any stamps that are in the shadows you're gonna to wanna to drop the brightness down a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna drop that brightness down. This is in probably the most deepest, the probably the most shaded part. So I'm gonna drop that shadow down even more. Same thing up here. These things seem to be in the shadows. So let's drop that down. Same thing with this one. Drop that brightness down, okay? This is gonna to help to make more realism when it comes to your shadows because if it's super bright in a dark area, you're gonna be like, well, wait a minute, this stamp is in a is in a shaded area. How does that work, right? So that's the thing that you're gonna to wanna to factor in is that in the shadows, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your stamps are a little bit darker, okay? And you don't wanna make it too dark that it pops out, okay? So you wanna make it to where it's relatively around the same brightness or darkness as the shadowing that you've textured in. So that already kind of helped to uh, show that this area is in the dark. This area is kind of in a darkened area. Okay, so that's going to help. Now the next step is that I've noticed that we also want to show some shadow work up against the dais, right? So that is where that path tool comes in handy. Now as always when using that path tool, make sure you apply a path right away. That way it's live and active and you can see what the path looks like on the map. Otherwise, you'll have to work with this kind of thing right here as a preview. And you know what? You don't really want to do that. You know, you prefer want to see a live one. So first, let's just boost it all the way up with opacity. We're going to make it black. Okay. You can also do a blur and blur looks nice. Okay. We're going to turn off the shadow. Thank goodness it's off. And we're going to drop the opacity. And I want to make sure that this bright, this darkness is around the same darkness that I did with the shading, okay? So that way there, it's matching. It would look really weird if it, this was super dark right here and this was only somewhat dark because there's still the same amount of shadow and where the light source is. So always kind of factor that in. I'm gonna go ahead and boost this up. I'm gonna increase, there we go, that should look good. Now I'm gonna apply this like this along the edge right here. Let me first increase the brightness Is it set to a different, oh, it's set to overlay. That would explain that. Let me go back to normal. There we go. 
we don't need it set to overlay. We just need to set it to normal. There we go. So we have a hard edge there. And this is going to be the ambient occlusion for these steps. Okay. Now I would do object shadows, but the thing is, is that uh, this is a very custom staircase or a very custom dais. We don't actually have one. And so if I was to try to control each one of the objects shadows in here, that would actually be very difficult and kind of a pain to deal with. So instead, I'm just going to use the path tool to create my ambient occlusion for these stairs. So already now it looks like it's not flat anymore. There's a little bit of dark there to show that there's a second step that popped out and that's absolutely necessary. Now the next part is to also add shadowing from over here. Now if the light is projected right here, you would expect this these parts of this of here to be covered in shadow. So let's increase that size and let's just go ahead and put in some shadow like this. Okay, oopsie. That is not what I wanted to do. Oopsie poopsie. That did not turn out well. Okay, we're gonna put some shadow in like this. And we've got to take it easy because sometimes the path tool can kind of be a pain in the butt. Okay, it's just the way it is. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna add in this. So there's a little bit of shadow right there. Just what we wanted. Perfect. There we go. So there's some shadow going that way. Awesome. It's working good so far. Shadowing, shading, it can be tons of fun. I'm going to save for right now. And we're going to add in the last bit of details, whether it's going to be chairs, whether it's going to be um, more lighting, whether it's going to add uh, maybe some cracks in the ground. Um, because the ground looks so uniform, you would expect maybe a little bit more artifacts, maybe some scuffing, uh, stuff like that. Okay, so especially if this floor is so reflective, you would actually expect scuffing, a little bit of scuffing on the floor. If you don't know what a scuff is, it's just a mark that a shoe can make. I think it's actually created from rubber. Rubber obviously didn't exist in this kind of a time period, but a scuff mark is like a mark that your shoe leaves on the surface of a ground. So let's maybe either add some artifacts from a, a, a filter. So one thing again mentioning filters you want to do less work instead of painting in more artifacts let's just add a texture and the texture will do the work for us so my suggestion would be old paper and i absolutely love old paper now it's not available in every style right away so you have to go plus that plus button by the texture filters once that's done you got to open up the catalog once the catalog is opened, you have to click search all styles. I know this is a lot of steps, but the only reason why we do that is because we don't want all the art to load at once from every style. Otherwise, it's going to cause serious lag on your machine. So that's why we do that. The extra steps are kind of worth it. So we're not actually keeping you from any uh, uh, accessing any other filters from other styles, though I think there are some exceptions to that rule, and we'll look into that. So let's add old paper. Okay, now because old paper is not technically a default texture for this style, you're not going to have the settings preset for you. So we're going to have to go and make those changes. So let's go to overlay. And right, right away, you're going to see that it already adds in artifacts into that ground. And now that floor doesn't look so pristinely perfect. Now the next step that I want to add in is I don't maybe want these artifacts to be affecting the chairs and the rug and all that stuff. I kind of want it to be below all that stuff. So you can just go down and just bloop, change that to where it's only going to be affected on the ground or where the textures are at. Okay. And if that's too much artifacts, you could just drop, you can just drop the opacity of that okay and you can change the size too if you want the artifacts to be different as you go okay you want larger artifacts you want smaller artifacts okay so this is what we've done to create some texture in the floor and let me remove it so you can see before and after now you see how flat and clean that is that looks kind of odd so by adding in this you've added in those old paper to really give it some character. Now I want to drop the opacity a little bit because I don't want it to be too much. I just want to add, just show just enough of the artifacts because the floor is reflective. It is kind of clean and shiny. So I don't want to add too much artifacts to where it looks like 
it's like grungy or dirty. The artifacts are there just to give a little bit more character to the floor texture. That's all that that's there for. Okay, so now we've added these nice textures to it for nice textures. And there are some other elements that we could add in here. So the, some other things that I would recommend is you could put chairs lined up against here. You could have suits of armor lined up against the main pathway here. It could be symbolic that the king or queen is well protected. Uh, you could put some candelabras lining this. I would definitely add something that's lined up against here, unless it's just meant to be a ballroom or something. And that way you'd want to remove all the the candles along here but candles can be moved they don't have to be rooted in the ground so let's think about what we want to add that's going to be lining the rug to give it a sense of dramatic or thematic or a nice feel to it like if we're walking down this carpet i do you probably as an enemy or maybe as a a subject you still want to feel somewhat intimidated or have some kind of imposing effect that the throne room has so let's go in and add in some more statues there might be some that might work well for that rug Oop, great pro tip love it awesome okay let's take a look at what we got here so there are a bunch of statues here there's even some cool wall decoration statues here that might work uh, there's broken statues. There's even these niche kind of open section where there's nothing going on right here. Um, there's the three-headed dog, some lions, a cherub. Uh, there's statues with dwarven statues here. I think there's even this kind of winged statue here. There's this statue here. So there's a lot to choose from. Let's just apply these real quick. And I'm going to factor in uh, how big they are with the person. So Statues don't have to be scaled to the actual character that's dead in here. You can make it a bit bigger, but I'm just going to factor it in for now. So there are multiple ways you can go about this. Maybe you want to have them facing inward like this, and we'll turn off those shadows. Don't worry. Maybe they're facing inward. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's even more statues than that, I do believe. Let me also factor in the object shadow here. Let me just turn off the shadow for now. I'm just going to turn it off. It's kind of getting and bothering me, so we'll go with none for now. And I'm just going to copy and paste, and I'm using the um, the carpet as a guide. See, this is the center point. So I'll just kind of use this as a guide, so that way I know how to evenly space out my statues between each other, or whatever it is you want to use. It's up to you how you want to do it. So I'll just select, copy, paste, and put two right here. And again, they can they don't have to be facing inward, they can be facing elsewhere. That's up to you. I'll put maybe another one right here. So you have something like this that kind of uh, lines that carpet. So as you're walking up to the dais, you have something to look at. And if you don't like the direction, you can always just select every single one of these and just hold down that control key and just shift and rotate with the mouse scroll wheel like that yeah that's the way you could do it let me just move it up a bit because it kind of the it is kind of getting in the way those stat that statue just barely made it that statue just barely made it it was gonna get hit by that <laughs> so you can have the statues kind of facing that way if you want oopsie i kind of have them going the wrong way my bad and i noticed that the wands are all facing in the same direction so you might want to consider flipping them if you want it to be to where uh, they're facing different directions so i can just select all of these and just go to that flip option oopsie not that one this one and so now you'll notice that uh these two are the wand is facing inward towards the rug so flip those okay now the next step obviously if you're adding something to it you're going to want to include the shadows so go back go to object and we're going to go with object here oopsie i wanted to select all of them select all from set there we go okay Go to object and we're going to want to project them away from those light sources right so let's just do that going this way like that and we can just leave it like that for now or you can have the multiple directions of the shadows so there's this option right here but there is two shadows let's go with showing another real quick uh technique about shadows real quick Let's first do, I do actually want to add objects in it real quick. We're going to do the ambient inclusion part. So let's go with zero. 
like this and there is some shadow there that's going to be the ambient occlusion so that makes sure at least they're popping up popping up the next step is let's say that we want to make a projected shadow and this is a really popular one you can use stamps from other styles as shadows because you're dropping uh the brightness all the way to zero and making it black so let's go over to fantasy regional and now i have statue in the search field so statues are going to pop up now you're going to see there's a series of statues here okay now you can use you can use statues as shadows okay but now there is one caveat to that there is a built-in shadow right here okay now you can negate that by um dropping the opacity because what's going to happen is is that this shadow is at a much lower opacity than the stamp itself so you'll be able to blotch out the opacity of that stamp eventually you'll see that a lot of that shadow is kind of gone at least a lot of it not all of it but a lot of it is kind of gone and you'll see that the shadow is projected right here like that and you'll notice that it has some of the shadow showing on top of it too. So let's go ahead and look at our projections again. I'm just gonna line these up. So let's put one right here like this. Now there is one, there is another caveat that I wanna mention that when shadows are on top of each other, they overlap and they're gonna become darker. Now that is just one of those unfortunate things. It cannot be changed, unfortunately. It's just the way it is until we figure something else out. So I'll just put those to here like this so that you have that i don't think this is actually proper we probably shouldn't do that because these shadows are elongated and i don't know a lot of these other shadows are not elongated but i just wanted to show you that you can use um regional stamps as shadows but it only works unless the shadows are elongated now elongated shadows happen when the sun is closer to the horizon so dawn and dusk that is when you're going to have the most elongated shadows. The higher the sun is up in the sky, the less elongated your shadows are going to be. So always factor that. Oh, yes, it does happen in real life, too. But a lot of people complain about it, too, just to let you know, Amberfly. A lot of people freak the freak out. Like, how do I get rid of that? I mind them, like, okay, but shadows do that. If two shadows are on top of each other in real life, of course it's going to be darker. Duh. But not everyone knows that or cares, okay? But again, let's just go back to review. The farther, so the, the closer the sun is to the horizon, that's dawn, dusk, the more elongated your shadows are going to be. Now, we, we look at the shadowing of the dais and these chairs, you'll notice that it's only projecting just a little bit. So the sun is closer to like 11 o'clock, okay, closer to 11 a.m. instead of, let's say, it being closer to sunset or sunrise okay so i'm not going to include those statues in there but i just wanted to show you that you can absolutely do that okay so let's go ahead and instead just go with that one trick that we went like this and just move the shadows over this way and that will do just for now it's okay it doesn't have to be perfect um you know just more work of whatever you do you just don't want the shadows to be ridiculously conflicting each other this works because the light sources are on the right and it's okay all right you don't have to add multiple uh, shadows if you don't want to just be sure that there's continuity in the shadow direction and opacity and brightness and darkness okay that's the thing that you want you want to make sure that you include consistency in that all right okay so we've done that it looks good. I, I like this so far. It's a lot better than, than where we had it. There's a lot of different things that we can add though. We can still add in some kind of guard railing so that you can't get to the dais. And there's still tons of chairs that you can put around. Like you can take these chairs and put them up against the walls. One like right here like this, one right here like this. Because this it could also just be a ballroom, and we'll obviously mix, mess with the shadows on that. And again, if you put in chairs, if you put any object in the dark part, make sure again that you drop that brightness, okay? So let's say you've got some chairs over here. These ones are in the light, so it's not really a big problem now, is it? It seems to work out okay. Oopsie, and I just realized that these are at layer 5, so they're not being affected by... Um, the, the filter so instead I'm going to 
go ahead and just drop these down a little bit. This one seems to be in probably a little bit more darker section, so I'll bring it down a little bit more. So again, just always remember to change the brightness and darkness of stamps that are in the shadow and in the light. So if I had a chair like right here, this chair is gonna be a little bit brighter, right? It's right there in the light, so I can boost up the brightness of that chair a little bit, right? This statue right here is directly in the light, so I could maybe increase the brightness of that just a little bit, right? This one's only partially in the light, this one's in the light, this one's in the light, could increase this one just a little bit, okay? So factor that in when you wanna do in your lighting, so that way light and dark and shadowing looks really good. So that's the steps for that. Now I want to add a little bit more chaos into the map. You would expect that there would be a lot more broken pieces in this chandelier. So why don't we look for something that might work good as debris. And instead of adding a bunch of stamps to make the debris, let's just paint it on, right? Because less work. Why do you want to put down 15, 20, 1000 pieces when you can just texture it, okay? So let's do that. Let's look at what our options are and see what we have for pieces that might work. Let's just take a look. I'm not entirely certain what will work. So let's just take a look at our options. Let's maybe use this right here. Let's maybe go into filters. Let's change the saturation. Let's maybe see if we can find a yellow that maybe will match with it. I don't know, probably not. I don't think so. We'll have to change the brightness down. Oh, well, actually, let's boost up the brightness maybe. Maybe I can get it to work right. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. What I'm trying to do is create debris from that thing. Let me bring the size way down. And in fact, it can probably just be black, I think. We could just say the pieces are kind of dark. There we go. That will work for now. We'll apply and just see how it looks. So let's just go ahead and apply this here. And what I'm doing is just kind of creating some debris because you would expect some pieces to have fallen off, right? That kind of makes sense. And I know it's a stone texture and I know that there's debris as a stamp that you could totally just add on there. But you know what? I don't want to do that and it's more work for you. So less work. Texturing is a great way to do less work. Don't give yourself more work because I know a lot of you might be DMs and you're in a rush, right? You don't, you don't have, you know, the time that I have two and a half hours to, you know, sit here, shoot the shit with you guys and, and make a map, right? You are in a time frame. You got maps to do. Come on. Get, uh, uh. You got a time frame. You got things to do. So these techniques will help you to speed up that process so you can knock out some maps real quick for your next campaign, your next battle, your next one shot, your next whatever it is you're doing. Okay. All right, so far so good. 94 changes I'm gonna save. We've done the chairs. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some things to explore, some final details, and then we're gonna call it good, okay? So about 15, 20 more minutes and we'll be done. I wanna thank all of you who have, who are here and have been watching. An extra thanks to those of you who have been here from the very beginning and have been enjoying the entire stream. Thank you for being here. Absolutely love having you here. It's so great to have so many great people here. I'm loving it. Oh yeah, definitely use the explore page. Tons of great maps there to use. And a lot of people are really nice. They make their maps clonable. For those who don't, they have good reasons, Patreons. They have a living to make. Okay, so the last details that I wanna add in is just to add in some extra stuff at, next to the chairs. So there might be like a wand or a staff, maybe some papers from some notes. Um, uh, maybe uh, 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 some jewelry or something lying on the ground. There's always some great options to choose from. So let's go ahead and throw in some details around these chairs so that they these people have something to check out. So let's go and type in paper. And I do believe we got to go back to Fancy Battle Act 2.0. Add them detail. Eat detail time. Do the detail dance, you know? It's time for the detail. Okay, let's go in notes, I think it is. There we go, my bad. So you got some nice paper here. I'm gonna select one and we're gonna scale it properly. Where's a person? There's a person, hello, dead body. I'd ask how you are, but I already know you're not doing well, obviously. I'm sorry. I know, someone, someone's gotta be the pawn in this map, map game. It has to be you, I'm sorry. 
Okay, that's a bit dark, so we're gonna change that brightness. There we go. And we'll make these pages a little bit smaller and we're gonna put them underneath. So it looks like it might be underneath there. Let's put in another, maybe a stack of papers right here. Maybe this person is some kind of official or something. And they're just like going through all their paperwork, trying to figure out what's going on here. Oh, wait a minute, these look like arms. So let's just put this further in. It would not be over the arm and this. So we'll put it like that. I'll make sure I rotate it a little bit. I don't want them to all be facing this, kind of all rotated the same way. See how this is rotated at a different angle. This one's at a different angle. This one's in a different angle. Look what happens if I make them all the exact same angle, right? It's gonna look a little, a little bizarre, okay? So always factor in rotating, especially if it's more than one of it. So if you have more than one piece of paper or note, make sure that each one is rotated at a different angle. So that way it looks a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more interesting and not too symmetrical. Because to me, symmetry is your enemy. It's going to be hard on the eye. It's okay to have it. It's not that you can't have it, but you should always add in an asymmetrical element into your map to break that symmetry. So you can have a whole map be symmetrical. Again, add in one element to make it asymmetrical. And I've done that here. You'll notice that I didn't put all the exact same stuff on each side. That breaks up that symmetry. Two chairs over here, a fallen chandelier here, uh, some paperwork over there. That's going to break up that symmetry. Again, I'm, I don't want to discourage you from saying don't add symmetry. Just make sure you add at least one element that breaks up that symmetry. And that is an, a something that the artistic community as a whole profession knows about. So break up that, a, that symmetry with a little bit of asymmetrical elements, okay? Let's go ahead and add something to another chair. And I think there should be some treasure or something like that that we can maybe add to give it a little bit more, like maybe there's a piece of jewelry right here. Mm, what do we want? Some jewelry. I'm gonna open up the map. Well, show me where the jewels are. I want some jewels, some rubies, some diamonds. Ooh, you know what? I have it set to expand all. That's probably why it's taking a little while to load. <laughs> By just turning expand all off, I can hopefully less load time. You see, this is how crazy our catalog is. There's so much art. Oh my goodness, there's too much. No, 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 there can never be too much art, right? <laughs> okay, I think, actually, I'm going to stop doing this and go straight over to Cave and see if maybe it's in there. I don't want to, like, spend forever trying to do that. So there might be treasure in the dungeon. Let me just check. There you are. Okay, so we got some, like, maybe some jewelry right here. Maybe it's just hanging from here because maybe that's, where someone sits or it's just hanging out right here like this, hanging over the edge or something like that. There's a lot of different options you can kind of go with. And if you feel like it, there should be more, uh, you could go with maybe setting it underneath. I'm not sure, no, that will just have to do. So you got some gem right there. I think we can also put in some other goodies here. Oh, hey, you know what, masks. If it's gonna be a ball, you gotta have masks, right? So maybe throw in some masks two is this eyes wide shut the code is fidelio okay let's get in here where are we where's that face at where's your face show me your face there we go yeah yeah that would cover their face i think yeah in fact we can put the mask falling on the ground it fell off boom there we go as they got hit their mask got flown off oopsie See, it just didn't go well for you. Bad day, I guess. You know, that's not how the ball's supposed to end with someone dying, or is it? All right, let's keep adding in some more masks here. Let's put in some more, put some masks over here by this table, maybe leaning up against the back of it like this. That looks good. And it looks a little, a little bright. So let's drop that. Oh yeah, mask stamps are the way to go. You see, there's so much art in the catalog. You're like, where the fudge muffin cookies, bananas, did this thing freaking come from? There's masks now. What's happening? Where does these masks come from? We can throw in a couple masks. Maybe put one right here. Make sure that brightness is back up again because this is kind of in a, a brighter area. 
of the map. Uh, oh, come on, up you go. There we go. Is there a blur or something? Why is it so blurry? Oh, there we go. Okay, that was weird. There we go. And it's lit up pretty good. Brightness is okay. And there's one more mask. Let's just throw that one more mask and then put it on this side maybe over here because there's not a lot of action going on. There's a mask right there. There we go. Sweet. Yeah, balls aren't fun unless there's a scandal or a death. Oh, I absolutely concur. Absolutely. That, that's probably more than true. That's probably more than true. All right. Sweet. I think we just add, I think we're just gonna add in just a couple more details and then we'll we'll call it good. I think things are looking good though. So far I like it. It's not really I don't know if it's a ball. It could be a ball, but I think it is. Let's just go ahead and add in some final little details just for fun, like some goblets, like maybe a goblet fell on the ground and maybe it's just like right here. I want to do some overlap. So there's a nice gauntlet right there. Or, I'm sorry, not a gauntlet. A goblet. Goblet! I said gauntlet. What is wrong with you? A gauntlet is what knights wear around their arms and their hands. Don't listen to this guy. He's a fraud. That's a fallacious statement. That is not what a gauntlet is, you naughty boy. Yeah, I know. I'm a bad person. Gauntlet? What? Psh. I need to be struck with a gauntlet right now. How dare you? Goblet. Gauntlet. What's happening? <laughs> How did this happen? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you I mean you expect the king to have a little, you know, a little bit, or king or queen to have a little bit of wine. Maybe we should throw in a little bit of blood to make it look like it's spilt on the ground like that. And there we go. Add that on there. And uh, make sure that the cup is above that layer. Broop, broop. There we go. And then there we go. Oopsie poopsie. Wait a minute. Should that not be above? Hello? So there we go. All right, and then we're going to rotate this so to make sure the blood's coming out of the gauntlet. A go goblet? <laughs> Jesus. I need physical help. <sighs> there we go. I'm, I dropped the opacity so that way I can retain uh, the texture of the stamp below it. So you have a nice bit of wine that fell down right there. There's a lot of action going on here. The, the, the monarch's cup has been tipped over. There's notes. There's... Someone dead over here by death by chandelier in the throne room. Yeah, I mean, come on, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Throw in a little bit of blood. It makes everything better. And just so you know, it's not just blood. It can be a water puddle. It could be tar. It could be uh, magical uh, water. There's so many different things you could do. And uh, yes, absolutely. Blood for the blood gods. Do you understand me? Blood for the blood gods. We can even throw in some, like, chests, and maybe if there's not enough dead people, we should just throw in more dead people. We need more dead people. I see dead people. They're everywhere. What are you dead people doing here? Ghost God, activate. Okay. I just want to add in just some last, last bit of goodies in here, and I think we'll be good. I kind of like these cool pieces here. I'm just gonna add a little bit much more in here. We could add food, you could add tables. Oh, you know what we needed? We didn't do? By gosh darn dung it. We didn't add no shrubberies. Look, I want you to go out into the forest and cut me a shrubbery. And if not, you will cut down a tree with a herring. A herring. Okay, let's go ahead and add in some shrubbery. So first thing, you're going to want to add in a pot or some kind of uh, flower pot box or whatever first, right? And then you're going to want to pick your plant. It can be flowers. It can be just a tree, just a green bush, whatever you want. There's tons of options. And you can just go right over to uh, the terrain. Let me check one second. Terrain right here. You click in terrain and only terrain stamps will pop up. Okay, and I think you should scroll up and you should find what you're not looking for. Oopsie, that didn't work. Let me, <laughs> oops, let me type in flower. You got to get some of that flower, baby. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at the options for flowers here. Some nice stuff here. Yellow looks kind of nice. You got this red pop color, some green. 
Some blue. Sorry, that's not green. That's green. That blue. What is wrong with you? Let's see here. This one, let's put this plant maybe on top. Let's just see what it looks like. Put that on top right there. There you go. You got a nice kind of... That. We want to change that shadow again. As always, you got to mess with shadows. Shadow work is just the way to go. We're going to go this way. And I'm going to bring down it a bit. I'm going to just move it over. There we go. And I'm going to group this. And I would always say rename it, but I'm too lazy, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead and move this around. Add in some shrubbery. Where where do we want to add in the shrubberies? And you can do a lot with shrubbery. You can put it, you can line, uh, you could line the statues with shrubbery. So where it looks like this, you could just put one on the side right there like that. You could have them lining up in between like this. You could change the stamps. There's so many different options on how you want to place your shrubbery uh, in a lot of architectural circumstances plants usually go up against walls um, as a backdrop so that way you can see the plant against the white plaster wall so that's normally where plants go but you can put plants whatever you want i know how dare you right now i am i am peeling my finger right now i am doing the the, the carrot peel i am shaming you naughty 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 i know i'm i'm a very bad person I've been told this on occasion, but no, by no one you know, of course. <laughs> okay, so you could do that. You could add these plants uh, right here. And you notice right away that green, in my opinion, already looks super nice. It already kind of brings out stuff. I'm not going to put it here permanently, but just for now, just to see what it looks like. So I can put some shrubbery here. You can change the sizes down. You can put some up against the wall. It looks like that shrubbery just barely... Look at that, the shrub survives, but not the person. Isn't that just a twist of fate? Spare the shrubbery, but not the girl. What is with this? What is with this? That shrubbery should have had it coming. That shrubbery was looking weird at me the other day ago. It should have been struck by that chandelier. I don't like that shrubbery. It's mean to me. I think it looks okay. You could add it anywhere. You could also line a whole bunch against the wall right here if you wanted to, like right here. Just again, remember to change the shadow work, of course, when you're doing it. Just gotta keep that in mind when you're doing it. And I'm gonna delete this one because I don't think I need that one there. So you're just gonna delete that. And of course, you're gonna wanna obviously mess with the shadows and stuff. So this whole one right here, if I can get to it, come on. Ooh, see, now this is a great use case. This this stamp is so big, it's kind of blocking my ability to uh, select this stamp right here. So just take that light source and just lock it. And in fact, you should probably lock all your light sources because light sources are relatively big stamps and they're easy to accidentally select. So there's a pro tip that I probably should have mentioned way earlier, but hey, what can you do? That's right. Oh, wait, Ogre Smash, hello. Have a planter get pushed off kilter from the body, striking it. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be a good idea. I can, we can maybe do that. Let's test that out first. Let me just change my, my brightness settings for the plants in the dark. Hello there, plants in the dark. Can you hear me? And even this one right here could probably be just a little bit, um, be just a little bit darker. Just pro tip about this one. If you want to select everything in a group, when you immediately open a group for the first time, like you open it, you double click it and open it, every single stamp in that set, in that group will be selected, okay? So that way you don't have to be like, oh, I should select everything in the group. You don't have to opening the group will automatically have everything selected, okay? Unless you click something else, like one object in the group, it will only select that object. So kind of a quick tip. You can select everything in a group just by opening the group firsthand, okay? How darest not showeth thy the pro tip to us earlier, says Cherry. You will be executed. You stand underneath that chandelier, sir. Stay there. Wait several moments while I grab my scissors. Then I cut this rope and it's, I'm, I'm not supposed to say that part out. My bad. How dare it you. There will be punishments. No cake. No cake for Matee. Matee gets no cake. And I like cake, by the way. Cake is delicious. 
stuff it in my face. I ate it like a two-year-old's. <laughs> Who needs forks? You don't eat cake with a fork. You just shove the plate in your face. It's delicious. I'm telling you. Hey, thank you very much. First time chatter. Thank you. Welcome, Trap Lord Koala. Koala, glad that you're here. All right, so let's keep going. Let's not stop. We got 1233. We've been going for about two and a half hours. Oof, it's a long one, but that's okay. Let's just do that, what someone suggested earlier with having uh, this potter falling. This pot has fallen over. So let's just do that. Why not? Let's just have some fun. So this thing, we're going to go ahead and delete uh, that pot and get rid of that. And we're going to want to find a way to create uh, a crate that fell over. So there are several options that we can go about this. Uh, Fantasy Regional would be my suggestion. Let's go in there. I don't know if this is going to work. Might as well try it out. Yes, it is a long one. I hope you guys don't mind that it's long. Appreciate that. Throne rooms are time consuming in my mind. I know that, that sounds weird, but they are. So let's go with maybe uh, we can go into crates here and there might be one in here we might be able to use. I'm not so sure, so we'll, we'll try some things out. Let me first just scale it up to it's about the same size and then go like this. And oops, I did not mean to do that. That was a naughty. Hello. There we go. And if the shadow is projected that way, that might work. I'm not so sure. It just that looks kind of odd. I'm not sure about that one. Let me try this one maybe. Yikes. Ooh, yeah, this is going to be tricky. Okay, so then the thing that I, who, 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 I'm not so sure. This one will be kind of tricky. I don't know if this actually is going to work because this doesn't look like it's rooted properly. I mean, I guess you could maybe go like that, but see the shadow is the problem. Clipping masks are the way to go about that. I guess I could showcase that. I'm not sure because what I wanted to do was to do this, but I don't know if it'll work. Maybe just put it down for now and we'll test it out. Let me grab a bush real quick. Uh, I think maybe this one might work right here and then we'll have it kind of sticking out like this. I know it's a bit different, unfortunately. So this is a bit different from that. The leaves are so much bigger. This is a little different art style. So it might not do, honestly, it might not work. Uh, there is one thing you can do also, if that doesn't work out, you can just take one of these and just rotate it a little bit to make it look like it was disturbed, like it was hit. So it looked like this and then just move it over just a little bit to make it look like it got hit. So by rotating it just a little bit, you've made it look like it's been disturbed. Okay, so maybe we're going to go over, the, we're going to go over the physics, okay? We're going to go over like how this person fell down so it's like they got hit and in their head just went bloop like this just bloop just hit that oops ouch no i'm not the owner just to let you know i am just a team member one of many in the team well not many but enough enough we're actually a pretty small team and that's okay there's nothing wrong with having a small team but this person's head just fell down smacked against that thing and we could even put in a little bit of put that blood over there just to kind of show that they did indeed hit their head against that Let's put a little bit over here too because we want a little bit of splatter kind of coming over the mouth as well. There we go. Oh, we do have a fantastic team. We truly, truly do. Okay. Well, I think that that is good. We've been going for quite a while. And you know what? I will make this map clonable uh, on my profile if you want to clone and edit this. So that way you can add in whatever you want. You want to scale it up, make it bigger, make it smaller. Entirely up to you what you want to do. But I think that's it. You get the general idea. I'll just do some real quick review just to go over it that your throne room is going to want to have the key essential things, right? You're just going to want to have, make sure that there's a throne where the royal rump can sit down. Okay, and you're, and that's really the number one thing that you're going to want to have is obviously the throne. You don't have to add in a dais. You don't have to add in two thrones. You can just throw in one. But I definitely recommend throwing in stuff that's going to be imposing on the map. So that means whether or not you're going to be adding in statues, whether you're going to add in some pillars, whether you're going to add in uh, shrubbery, whatever it is you're going to want to do. So always be sure to... Um, Always be sure to think about kind of the decoration, the ambiance that you want in that throne room, and think about the quest.
that you're dealing with, right? So always take the fact of that in as a DM. What is happening in this room? Is it going to be a combat? Is it going to be uh, solving a puzzle, running around looking for clues? Is it going to be running around interrogating people in the room? Is it going to be uh, you're going to uh, uh, try to protect the royalty from a wave of enemy troops that are going to be coming in? Are you actually there to assassinate the, the royals? Are you there to blend in? Are you there to be a spy, right? So think about all the various stories, the elements that you want to do in the map, and that will help you to determine really the details that you're looking for, okay? Because sometimes when you're working on a map, you're like, well, I don't know what to put in a throne room. Well, that's that's okay. If you don't know, you don't know. But you won't know what to put in the throne room unless you know what's going on in the throne room. So that's the big secret. You absolutely need to think about first what is happening in this throne room, and then you can decide what stamps and what things to put in it. So that would be my suggestions. Real question here, Trap Lord Koala, do you ever showcase members' work? You know, um, the Explore page is generally where you're going to find that. I put my work and I put a lot of other work of other people in there. Um, we have uh, Philip, Cynthia, and a few other people who do make maps. And whenever they make them public, I put them on the Explore page because all most of our team members make incredible maps. So yeah, the explore page is really where you're want, where you're going to want to go to find your maps, okay? Because heck yeah, the explore page is where it's at. And if you want to know how to get on the explore page, it's not complex. Just make good maps, make them consistently and uh be very active in our Discord community because we do want uh our members to be active in our community. That's really helpful. So those are the ways that you can get onto the Explore page is just by doing a good job. And the people who curate the Explore page will find your work and will probably add them. So, and uh, you know what? The more more work is on the Explore page, that gives you more uh, visibility to your Patreon or whatever it is you're doing, whether your Instagram or whatever. That's the visibility that you want. Because I know some of you here are probably private contractors. Who are trying to uh, you know make maps for the DM for the D and D or tabletop community, and that's the way to do it is to give yourself visibility. So if you see your map on the explore page, that's the way to do it. And if you see it and you haven't put links to your to your uh, whatever your Instagram or whatever it is, make sure that you do that. Okay, make sure that you put uh, wherever your Instagram is in in your map descriptions or whatever links you have so that, that way people can go there and check out your work because I do want you private contractors those of you who are trying to make money and sell maps I do want you to do well in the explore wage explore page is really that's the place to do it so go go shoot 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 go now go to the go go to your profile make make maps public okay put in the links so that way people will find your work hey I'm going to call it good we've been here for almost three hours Thank you, everybody. It's been great. Oh, wait, is there a question that I need to answer here first? Wait a minute. Okay, hold on a second. I got to answer a real quick question by RZ. Uh, would there be any rule against putting a custom stamp in the corner of published maps on the incarnate site that indicate your social media is where you offer custom maps? You know, I think a lot of people, you're talking about a watermark by definition. Uh, yeah, if you want a watermark, people do it. People use watermarks uh, all the time, just to let you know. Oh, wait a minute, that question was answered a while ago, my mistake. But anyway, with watermarks, uh, you could absolutely, you could add watermarks if you want. I don't think that's a big deal. If you look on the, uh, the Explore page, some people do put watermarks. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Uh, some people do put watermarks on their maps, and that's okay. I think it's okay to put watermarks on, on, your, on your maps. I mean, you're advertising these maps on our page, it's on the Explore page. There's nothing wrong with giving more visibility to your other social medias, you know, just provided that that map that you made is obviously made with incarnate, right? If you were to just make a map uh, with Photoshop and then add it to incarnate and then put your uh, watermark on it, that would probably not be okay. We do want you to use incarnate and use the tool, okay? So I was hope that helped to answer that question. And if there's no other questions, we'll call it good. Hey, if if you missed this, if you popped in not too long ago, don't worry. This is going to be added to YouTube. I'm going to do that pretty much right after the stream or after my lunch. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and check that out. So hey, thank you everybody.
I just want you to know that the new uh, the new calendar is up, so please go check that out. It's for April. We've added four additional streams, so there's going to be more streams than usual. So go ahead and go and check that out on Discord. The Discord link was provided by Cheryl. You can just scroll up and check that out. Thank you, King Clown. I appreciate that. It's been a great stream. I really enjoyed my three hours with you all. You guys are fantastic. All right. Oh, there are a few things that I like on the way Photoshop operates better, but actual mapping itself on the site is great. You know, it's perfectly okay if you want to import your map into Photoshop and then uh, do touch-ups and stuff. That's perfectly okay. What's against our terms and services if you rip individual assets out of the tool and then try to edit them in a non, uh, non-incarnate you know so like if you take it to photoshop a stamp and then touch it up and then try to sell it or whatever that's not allowed in our terms of service for anybody who's might be confused about that okay so nothing wrong with uh taking your map and putting it in photoshop and touching it up with shadows or using whatever features on photoshop are just make sure that you're not stripping uh removing individual assets from from the tool and then editing them because that by definition is against our terms and service. Okay. Okay. This is my final goodbye. I know I do this 12 goodbyes later. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you everybody. Please have a great day. Okay. Please stay safe and healthy and thank you for being here. Avita Zane to all of you.